of all times for me to get a freaking nosebleed. <laughs> Uh, welcome everyone, people who watch my channel and stuff. Not people who watch Michelle's channel, because that one doesn't- we don't- we ignore that one. I'm uh, writing a video, I promise. Shh, don't listen to her. Uh, so... I beat Royal. Uh, Michelle beat Royal yesterday. Uh, yesterday. What's Royal? <sighs> Alright, well that's the end of our, uh, discussion. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, so we both beaten Royal. Uh, I've had a couple of days to sit on it. Michelle sl uh, did not sleep last night, but that's about it. I I've had just under twenty four hours to sit on it mm -hmm. now, because uh, I beat the game at like okay, it's, it's three p.m. when we're recording this. I think I beat the game around six. So uh, yeah, yesterday, you're a baby and you didn't beat it as fast as me. Absolutely. You know, Adam, do we have to compare play times? Do we have to put that on the video? Okay, listen. It's not my fault my brother spent actually 40 hours fusing. <laughs> That's not my problem. Just use Arsene for the whole game, like I did. I, I made God Arsene, it was really fun. I think the attacking. Um, but it. yeah, if you clicked on this, or if autoplay put you in this torturous hellhole, uh, this is going to be our discussion about Royal and everything in it. Uh, spoilers and all, so if you don't want spoilers, obviously, get out! Get out! Go! Re Leave. Go! Uh, um, that's, that's mean. Why are you being so mean? <laughs> they wronged me. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you want to avoid spoilers, go, but now we're going to be getting in the thick of it. Snape kills Ryuji. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so where to begin? Remember when we said we prepped for what we were gonna say, kind of, but not really. I like on. On is really good. Cool. Uh. <laughs> hmm. This is the game of Toko, right? <sighs> so the game's really good. It's, no, legit, J joking aside, this is, they took my favorite game ever and made it better somehow. Yeah, uh, just, just to clarify something I've been saying a lot, so, Royal is, er, sorry, regular Persona 5 was already my favorite game of all time. A very yep. flawed game, but it was one of those things that, like I said in my videos, despite the flaws, it's something I could always grow to love, something I could appreciate, and just this work of art that was, despite its flaws, something I loved. And it was also just the good outweighed the bad by a mile. Yeah, exactly. With Royal, <laughs> uh, props to the new director. Uh, yeah. I forget his name, but uh, um, I think he directed uh, Golden as well. M Makoto Johnson. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the way they handled this game is so much better than Vanilla B uh, P5. Which I didn't think was possible. Yeah. Almost every flaw of that game, with few exceptions, and anything that's left is really just nitpicks at this point, mm -hmm. they've been fixed up and retooled so that it plays near perfectly. It's the best game. Like, because that's the thing. As soon as I beat the game, I took a screenshot of my completed save file and I just put on Twitter, best game ever made. And I stand by that. No, it's... same. It, it, it trended a little bit for me. And trended relatively. Uh, 50 retweets, yeah! I got like two. Everyone follow <laughs> Michelle on Twitter, please. Uh, and yell at her to finish her Don Rampa tier list. Um, at Meloichi. <laughs> follow Meloichi. Uh, <laughs> tell them to die and you'll get kicked off Twitter. You can find me at. Um, at Scott the Wise. Uh, or if you're a sensible person, don't use Twitter. Yeah. But yeah, so like, the game- Find me on MySpace. I need Continue. to stop putting things in my comment section. <laughs> Not my comments, my uh, description. <laughs> but yeah, so the game was a 10 out of 10 already, at least in mm -hmm. my opinion. And I don't 
normally believe in the quote unquote 11 out of 10 because obviously that doesn't make any sense. But something that I already considered a masterpiece and a 10 out of 10 personally, the fact that it could go up so much, this is probably the only game I will ever classify as an 11. Because, yeah, my, my original rating for P5 was like a 9.5. It just lost points for those low points, like the Okumura Palace and stuff like that. Well, yeah, because if you don't like the Okumura Palace, you're a bad person. Mm-hmm. Um, with, yeah, Royal, though, took it from like a 9.5 to an 11. It's just... It's, it's so good. Um, which, yeah. I didn't expect it to be this much of an advancement. I knew it was going to be better. Mm-hmm. I was I was willing to bet it'd be better because the P5 spinoffs proved to me that Atlas could learn their lesson from the P4 days because the P4 spinoffs, many of them are great, but there's some jank in a lot of the way they're written. From what I could tell, that isn't a problem with the P5 spinoffs for the most part. And, in, and from what I, I still haven't played Q2, but from what I know, most of the jank in that game's writing is associated with the P4 cast. So yeah, which. Good job, Atlas. Good job. Uh, uh, I guess, speaking of good job, a lot of new characters added in. We have, we'll, we'll get into actually discussing them more later, but we have Jose, the most adorable freaking uh, egghead boy to ever exist in Persona. I, I think I, I think that, I don't know if you can argue that one. I'm trying to think of another egghead boy, so yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> Kabayakawa? He, he's new, yes, you are right. Yes! He was, um, uh, the SIU director. Mm-hmm. Yes, SIU director, best character. Still unnamed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but no, so, but they did yeah. add a new character. Except he's not new, he wasn't the original, but um, S- was it SIU director replacement? How do you feel about oh, it? Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. There's a bunch of small details that are so funny to me in this game. Anyway, continue. <laughs> We'll talk about Ghost Joker later. Continue. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, but so they added Jose, uh, <laughs> which adds a lot of really cool features. Uh, Goro Kechi now has an actual, like, real confidant, which I originally was kind of skeptical about, but in execution, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, there's now uh, Kasumi Yoshizawa, which also superb character, which we will Fan- also get into later. Fantastic character. Yeah, and then uh, Takuta Mari- um, Maruki. Yeah. Uh, Takuto Maruki? I don't know how to say it. Um, Toko Maruki. Yes, uh, Toko... Ma- K- Komeda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, phenomenal Character characters goodness. across the board. Uh, we're we're going to focus on gameplay at the start and then kind of transition to the story later. But mm-hmm. we'll get to them. Don't worry. Uh, so I guess one of the first big things to talk about is definitely the, like, quality of life changes. Mm-hmm. Because there's a freaking crap ton. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Something that was super useful that I ended up not using all that much, honestly, which that's more just my own preference being used to old P5, mm-hmm. was the, the quick select menu that they added. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, in the overworld, there's now a quick select menu where you just tap the PS4 like touchpad. And it has, like, one of those battle menus pop out. You can immediately go to, like, the most recommended confidant. Uh, go to the most recommended places to, like, boost your stats. Uh, shows you what other people have done in the day. Just a whole flurry of different things. It's super useful. Uh, I used it at the start. I, yeah, I still, to check social links, I still just prefer to look at the map. Yeah, I, um, it's a very good choice for beginners, I'll say, say that. Like, and, I'll suggest yeah, so- what to do. Yeah, and I i mean, I also use it just to see what other people are doing, because that's always a fun thing to see. And seeing people hanging out, a, a sizable enough group of people to appear on that menu, hanging out with Takemi in third semester, which I still don't understand. <laughs> 3%. Well, it was, yeah, it was like 3% for, like, confidants, and it was, like, Takemi and Kasumi, I think, were the two. And I, it's like... I'm guessing the bulk of that is Kasumi, but the fact that Takemi was, like... Present. Even in, on there, like it's it's so it was so bizarre. Like it was almost every day in third semester, Takemi was on there, and I'm like, she's like the second confidant. She's like the one that most people max out first, other than like Yoshida and Ryuji. Yeah, I mean Ryuji, you typically don't max out first because the game stops you from doing it. You're like Takemi's right. one of the first 
do unless you were me and forgot to do the mementos request for two months but that's not the point i think that's a new problem yeah uh but yeah that quick i just kind of forgot nice. i was like why won't you talk to me i didn't realize there was a timer on this <laughs> are, you, are you good to get me can you talk about that something because like, I just kept checking the map, and she was grayed out, and then one day I finally decided to go to the clinic and just see, and then she was like, huh, this guy, and I was like, oh yeah, him. <laughs> the, the, the girl might be dead, sorry. <laughs> I, you know, uh, after two months, I think she might actually be dead this time. <laughs> <laughs> You did no, that. yeah, the 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 the, men, the quick select menu in the overworld's really cool. Like I said, I barely used it, but it was it was convenient for mm. those who needed it. Uh, yeah, there was that. Uh, something I never had a complaint with, but people freaking praise the Lord for this. Uh, Morgana tells you to sleep, like basically never, <laughs> unless it's I, actually I, pr like plot crucial. Yeah, which is why that's also why. It, but that, I think that, in a way, it also makes it so much more noticeable that there's five days where you could do nothing during the Yokuma arc. Yeah, it makes that significantly more annoying. I do like the little, like, flavor text they added for that, though. Like, you check all the stuff and Joker's extremely upset about Morgana's absence. It also makes yeah. it noticeable in the third semester at the very start, where you kind of yeah. spend an entire week <laughs> doing nothing and... Again, we'll talk about this later. Acting like a ghost to all your friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like... Yeah, but making more guys make you go to sleep less, I think worked. So, like, there's still a lot of times where you can't go out or do confidants, but you can at least stay in, watch a movie, make some tools, feed your plant, uh, take a dump, whatever you need. Uh, actually, yeah. Okay, speaking of taking a dump, actually a good... A really good addition to the game. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Was that in... Yeah, it was was because yeah. Now you check the bathroom and it tells you how close you are to getting your stats. Was that in the original? So I don't think it was. From what I recall, it wasn't. Uh, mm. Correct the comments if we were wrong. Because you could go into the bathroom uh, in regular P5, which was something I only noticed on like my third playthrough. Yeah, same. Me and I both noticed that like way later, and then my boyfriend just kept being like, "How'd you not know?" I saw that like the day I got I played the game. I was like, "Why the frick would I check the bathroom? I want to go upstairs. I want to go home." Um, Especially because, like, the, the automated animation of Ren walking down the stairs, I think, puts him in front of the door, so you can't even check it unless you turn around. Yeah. So, like, oh, why would I do that? I, I don't need a bathroom. I think a lot more space to it now. That, that might just be, like, me just misremembering. But, yeah, if you go there, uh, now you have all this free time to do stuff. At the beginning of the game, you can only do it within LeBlanc. Uh, but, yeah, you have free time to do extra stuff. A lot of the time... He, uh, Morgana used to tell you to go to sleep is when you can just hang out in LeBlanc, do different things. Now there's a way to get up your kindness easily because if you go to the bathroom, you can clean up LeBlanc, which sometimes will give you extra uh, confidant points with Sojuro. Mm -hmm. Or, actually a freaking good feature, it's not like specific numbers, but if you go in there just to think, it'll say how close you are to different social stats, which will tell you what to focus on. Uh, whenever you, like, need to get close to whatever. I do love the tradition of the Persona series of having the back of me where your protagonist thinks. Yeah, uh... That was a thing in 3 and 4. It didn't do the same thing, but that's what it did. Yeah, I mean, they're taking a note right out of, uh, No More Heroes in that regard. There you go. Uh, it's the Ultra Despair Girls way, save in the bathroom. Oh, crap. <laughs> I don't know. Japanese uh, games are weird. Video games. Yeah, what... What a game! <laughs> <laughs> what a game! What uh, a game! Yeah, so there's that edition. There's a uh, freaking Kichi Joji. Kichi Joji is awesome. Which, when Kichi Joji, like I first unlocked it, uh, entirely new map. Probably, I think the biggest map in the game in the overworld. That's not like separate loading screens. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, if you include everything in Shibuya, yeah, that's bigger. But like, yeah, but that's like four. Or it's like one thing. Uh, and what about the palaces, though? Those are bigger. You're wrong! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Kichi Joji is massive. At first, I thought it was just kind of for show, and there wasn't mm -hmm. really that much to do. The more I played the game, I mm -hmm. realized how much awesome crap is stuck in the Kichi Joji. Because, mm -hmm. like, there's darts, which raises your baton pass score, which, or your, like, mm -hmm. level... 
which is incredibly, like, super powerful. Yeah. Abuse, fuck Akechi. Abuse He's that a... as much as you can. Akechi is a douche. Akechi turned a a, a team-based exercise into a fucking competition. <laughs> a fucking whore. Which, sometimes- I never had it happen to me. Didn't he ruin it for you one time? No, yeah, it was round four. Because the thing with Akechi, because he asks for the highest possible score. It's uh, he's like, yes. Yeah, he goes for 701. He he basically gets a bullseye every time. But one time, I was like, all right, Akechi's going to get the three bullseyes. And then as, as long as I don't mess up, we'll be good. So Akechi was like, all right, bullseye, bullseye, 14. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't purposefully sabotaging you to see if you could somehow break the limits of the game? You can't. That's the thing. I legit think he was just like, oh, I'm not going to let him beat me. If I go down, he goes down with me. He's such a fuck. The, uh, we'll talk about a catchy more later, but he's such a bitch in this game. I, and I it's really the best it. kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's dart billiards, which actually do billiards. At first, it doesn't seem like anything. Billiards is good. It increases your technical score. And if you get that to max, you can automatically knock people down with technical attacks. Do yeah. it. Tech I love technicals were such a minor part of the original game. The way they've been redone is really useful they're extremely integral to gameplay now and like mm -hmm. not that you have to rely on them but they're incredibly useful if you do like on is actually like probably my most useful party member in the game up like until i was playing maybe not for boss fights but otherwise it's just dormina and they die that was my thing with on was i built her just for damage which meant she was my boss killer I sense a bias sure. from you. You seem to like on a bit. Goro Akechi Stan right here. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, also, screw you, soft boy Akechi fans. Uh, you just got stomped on. But, again, saving that for later. Kiji Joji, play billiards, play darts. Uh, there's a temple now, which, similar to, like, uh, training in your yeah, room, this good. raises SP. The more you go to the temple, the more your SP raises every time. I think it goes up to like 12 SP per visit once you max it out. Which is insane. Out. That's ridiculous. And all those stat boosts carry over to New Game Plus. Uh, including the Jazz Club boost, where every mm -hmm. time you go there, one, it plays like one of the best songs in this game. No more What Ifs is the best. It's yep. Really good. Uh, sometimes Lynn, the actual voice, like, the actual singer shows up and sings the song in a not radio wave. Mm -hmm. And it's good. Uh, but yeah, you can get, you can look on the sign, it'll, like, hint at, like, what different things will happen. It ranges from leveling up party members, giving them new skills, uh, <clears throat> give, like, giving them just different boosts, buffs, like, raises to SV, HP, just anything you can think of. Yeah. Uh, I got, uh... I got a Spellmaster, I think a Spellmaster, for Makoto, at, like, the very nice. end. Mm -hmm. Which was super helpful because of her third-tier persona getting Checkmate. Yeah. So that only costs 45 SP, which just means for just a little bit of SP, she can debilitate the entire enemy team. <laughs> which made the boss fight much more reasonable. Yeah, I didn't really use the Jazz Club until the very end of the game. There was a lot of that uh, Joji stuff I didn't realize how useful it was until the end, because yeah. I was going through, like, the regular motions. The main stuff I used in Joji for most of the game was the clothes store, which is the used clothes store where you can sell all of your garbage sooty clothes, mm -hmm. which is... So, that's a that's, ton of money, because there's a that is lot stopped. more you get. And, uh, using, and using the points to buy... Um, new clothes typically was a really good way of getting gear yeah it gets you really good gear you can also get true. uh like different true buying gear from a y yeah it's much better investment just get the clothes for free this time and get mad cash on top of it yeah like a y is obviously still the way to go for weapons because where else are you gonna go yeah but you can also one of the things that was really useful for me uh you get items that will like lower all attack for enemies and mm -hmm. stuff like that or like different things like that super useful um, they sell incense, which is new, which will help you, mm. like, raise your, uh, personas, like, stats. Because now <coughs> you can actually get, like, max level, like, all stats personas, yeah. which I'm still working on for, uh, I'm trying to get a max Raul. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Um, 
Yeah, there's that. There's just plenty there's of other the... shops lined up around. Yeah, there's the store that sells all the amp trinkets, which are super useful. Mm -hmm. um, from like, it's like that one character where it's like, well, I can't think of something very specific to you, so here, Haru Psychic Amp. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know if you found this, Michelle. Mm -hmm. So the, I found this. Guy. Yeah, I found that on the last yeah. day. Same. And I... Yeah, he was like, <laughs> was like, huh? Wanna buy a sundial? Hey. Uh, uh, yeah, but that's a cool feature that I actually want to explore more in New Game Plus yeah. to see what he can give you. But it's like, yeah, space. hey, get me this random item, buy me Big yeah. Bang Burger, and I'll give you a freaking, like, It's a like a gun. chewing soul or something? Yeah, it, it varies. <laughs> give, give, give me a burger, I'll give you a high counter. Yeah, also, depending on how... It, I, I think depending from person to person, it'll vary whether or not this is a good thing. SP items are really plentiful, which they already were yeah. in the original because you just make coffee forever. It's a lot more reasonable now. Yeah, I mean, unless you go to Mementos, max out the uh, the Jose item thing. Uh, yeah. Because I did that. I found one of those ATMs that's just sitting on the platform. I smacked it, and it gave me 11 soul food. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wait, 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 wait. You you can smack those for items? Yeah, Victor told me about that. You learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> it's the bet. Like that's the thing. There's so much in this game. I'm aware of the fact that I didn't see everything. Yeah, we can talk about mementos and all its changes in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Kichijoji is a cool addition. There's a lot of new stuff just scattered around. Uh, the Maid the Cafe isn't one. I don't know why I didn't know the Maid Cafe was a thing in regular P5. It's really funny. Um, but also, yeah, the club in Kichijoji banger, banger music. It's freaking good. Was it Kichijoji 1980X, I think is what it's called, or something like that? Yes. Um, I'm trying to think about a lot of the new things. Because a lot of them just feel super natural now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just kind of rolling it through my head. You can do it. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah, but there's, there's a lot of new stuff. It's really cool. I think this is why other podcasts have like notes. Don't. Fine. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna look I'm gonna look at my notes for what I like about Royal. Let's go. Let's see. I'm gonna, All right. I'm gonna point at Here. a random thing. Explode the nope. enemies. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. No. Um. Yeah. I guess I guess we can talk about. Uh, freaking. Uh, Mementos, because that's a big improvement. Yeah, Mementos is way better in this game. First thing I think that's the honestly the best improvement about Mementos is just the fact that there's like five songs now. Yeah, there's five Mementos themes now. I oh. like that thing. I never hated the original Mementos theme. I, I it was I definitely one of the lesser songs in the game, but I really liked it. Mm -hmm. It was. But I will admit, after playing P3, where the music changed throughout all throughout Tartarus, I was like, the one, it was like that, the music changing in Tartarus and Tartarus' atmosphere were the two things I thought it did better than Mementos. Yeah. Now, I think I could still say that the aesthetic of Tartarus I like more, but the music portion of Royal is way better now, just because, like, Definitely. all the layer songs are really good. Mm. Uh, the way it's sort of like this evolution of the song is it keeps going until you get down to the final layer where it's basically just a really intense version of the original song. Yeah, and then the final version, it's, it's just good. It's good. It's good. No, but, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Pimentos. We are very good at making videos. Yep. Yeah, but the Mentos theme constantly changes. It's good. Oh yeah, that's what's good. The aesthetic of Mementos mm -hmm. is significantly changes per floor, so it's a lot more distinct. Like I can remember most Mementos floors now. It's and, like, not how just they a differ. different color. Yeah, because each each it's... level gets a different like aesthetic to like the walls and the tracks and stuff, and like yeah, it evolves in a much more dramatic way. It's not like Tartarus where every section felt like a different location, but like it's still, no matter what, it still is clearly a subway tunnel. Yeah. But it's the way the aesthetic changes is way better. Yeah, so you have some places that are like this bright neon green or bright red. You have like this more like dim gray look to it. Like just like a quaint like purple pink. You uh, have the floor that I couldn't see on because my TV uh, brightness is terrible. Yeah, uh, I was actually going to transition with that perfectly. Uh, now Mementos has like random events per floor where it'll give you some challenge and it has a high reward for that challenge. You just have to deal with it. 
the something similar like that, but they added more. They added a lot more to it. I, I think before it was just like there are strong enemies here. Now it's like, yeah. hey, you go on this floor, you are completely blind, and you can't There's... see squat, and the Reaper's coming after you now. No, yeah, my, my favorite type of floor was just everything is a treasure demon, except the Reaper's already here, so... Yeah, that's, you're it. that's freaking great. There's just, like, <coughs> floors where it's just super powerful enemies aplenty, uh, items aplenty, uh, my, Jose is my there, personal... that's always a special floor for me. My personal favorite, straight line floor. <laughs> yeah, there's a floor where it's just... Four straight lines. <laughs> no, it's, it's literally just a straight B line to the end, and it's just filled with shadows. It's really hard to avoid them. Yeah, I don't know if this was a thing in regular, but yeah, there's a lot more, like... They don't appear super often, but there are the, like, super defined floors that have a specific shape that are really entertaining to find when you get them, because, like... One of my favorites was, like, it's a big circle, and every corner of the circle the corner of the circle it's a square every corner of the square has like two different no, walls you can circle. break down and it's got like a little square rooms there and it just looks nice and it gives memento some personality it's really cool yeah also this is i don't i'm assuming this was a rare encounter because it was really funny i told you about this yesterday which was randomly while i was in the final area of mementos i found a jack frost and a jack-o-lantern so i yeah. found the jack bros which like you know those are like, jack o is the first enemy you fight in the game, and Jack, jack Frost, Frost you like find... 16. Yeah, Jack Frost is in Madarame's palace. So I found these two, but they were both super high-leveled and had the best moves in the game. This game just which has I, so much charm to it. Which, like, I really like that, you know, it's a it's a nod to, you know, the Jack Bros and all of that. Uh, the, the hit game for the, the Virtual Boy. The and... Yep. And... I don't know, it was really funny, also I couldn't recruit them. <laughs> It was sad. Yeah. I wanted my god Jack Frost to beat the final boss with, but I couldn't. They're uh, kind of a slight tangent, but it did remind me of this. So the Mementos missions, which there are more of, obviously, and a lot of them are really good. Uh, yeah, they, they tie more into your actual character's arcs of, like, like it's not just Mishimo gives them to you. Like, you get texts from, like, On, who's like, hey, there's this guy. He's taking advantage of women. Yeah, Can and they'll, like, stop thank that? you after and, like, reflect on it. On top of that, they're, it's not used as often as I kind of hoped, but like, again, nitpick. Uh, but now a lot of those fights, I don't know if this was a thing in regular P5. If it was, it maybe happened once, but there's mm -hmm. ones where you can talk your way through it to beat the fight. Yeah, I got one of those. Yeah, there, there's a couple of those and you talk your way through it uh, and come to a peaceful resolution to it, which a lot of, fixes a lot of misconceptions first of all of like to change a heart you have to beat the crap out of them no you can talk your way through it and it's really i good. love undertale yes or you can beat them oh my gosh there was someone who legitimately tweeted unironically mm -hmm. that persona 5 stole its negotiation system from undertale don't talk to me listen <laughs> I, I i saw that and it was funny uh i look because yeah i do like the improvement to mementos missions just because like in the original game, I think the only one that was really unique was just the cheating gamer guy. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, one of the funniest voices in the game. Oh, it's freaking good. Is, is that like the bro voice or whatever? No, it's the guy. He sounds like kind of nasally. And he's like, because it's because it's he's got that weird doofy voice with like the shadow filter over the voice. Mm. So he's just like, you can't beat me. I'm the king. <laughs> It's so funny, and I always associate it with that lion persona, or like the the cheetah persona, or whatever it was. Uh huh. No, like yeah, it's I like can't the see him anymore without thinking of that dude. Because like the, yeah, the only because like that's the first that's like the shadow you fight with a catchy for the first time in Size Palace. Mm -hmm. And I just heard that voice. It's really funny. Yeah, because that's the one tied to Shinya. Um, but yeah, a lot of the new Mementos missions are mm. good. There is a specific song tied behind one of the final ones. <laughs> that is kind it of costs, a hidden little easter egg and it's the it costs, greatest thing it costs, ever. it costs one coin in the thieves den it's co it costs one coin it's worth a million in my opinion because there's never been a better song in persona yeah clearly screw you are like <laughs> we'll get to it who needs who needs last surprise such a good song um I mean, look it was it was a really funny song it's called he's a trick star and it's great is it trick star I believe so. At least that's what I saw on YouTube. Uh, that, that might be a direct translation for the Japanese. 
version. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I know. I, I think what it is in the in the English one is just he's a trickster with a star at the end. If it's yeah. supposed to be he's a trick star, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Um. I'll have to double check that. But so yeah, Mementos missions are a lot more interesting and engaging now. Uh, Mementos itself, other than just the aesthetic music changes, the Mementos missions, uh, freaking Jose. I like, I like him. So, Jose shows up, he comes in his little car, just beep beep, says good job to you, because he's, he's the best. He's driving a fucking bathtub. <laughs> he's driving a bathtub, he's got some balloons <laughs> from Party City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, hey, uh, get me some flowers so I can drink them. Because I want to understand humans, so you get them the flowers, which are because that's the thing they they amped up the like the quality of items that you can get by just going around. But now there are less of them because the majority of the things you'll be picking up are flowers. You can trade in yeah. flowers to Jose to get items. You can also get stamps across every floor. Sometimes they will randomly show up with like two on a floor, but there's like a guaranteed one every floor. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you can use those to boost your items, money, experience, whatever. And Stamps are great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's a super nice addition. Mementos actually feels really fun now. Because, like, yeah. in Vanilla P5, I liked Mementos. It still felt like more of a formality to me. Like, because mm -hmm. there's the three main portions. Palaces, Daily Life, Mementos. Now all three portions feel fully fleshed out, and I love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the... I got something to say in a second. Oh, boy. <laughs> the, you might know what I'm talking about with how I'm giggling. Oh uh, the moment, Yeah, the, in Mementos, the stamps are super useful. You can use flowers to essentially refresh it to distribute them however you want. And it just m makes Mementos feel really fleshed out. On top of that, oh for all you people who think Mementos is a slog, you might want to rank up Ryuji. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, okay, so yeah, in the original P5, Ryuji's ability was if you were a high enough level, you would just instantly beat a shadow and take it yeah. for yourself. Now in the game, in the original game, and this is why people didn't like it in vanilla, was you didn't get experience or money. Now you still do, so it's, You get experience you know, and money, and instead of just, because if you walk, sometimes you just want to fight them. In regular P5, if you walked up and tried to ambush them, it usually mm. wouldn't do the thing. Or, no, sorry, it would always do the thing. Yeah. And sometimes you just want to fight an enemy, which I think that's the only reason why Reset Era insisted, yeah, we should be able to turn off uh, Confidant abilities. Yeah. But so now, if you regularly ambush an enemy, usually it will initiate a fight. But now mm. you can sprint in the overworld and you can sprint in Mementos. Which, by the way... Sprinting at the next confidant I wanted to talk to was really funny. It, it gave me three. Yeah, three it gave houses. Me, it gave me three houses vibes. Is doing that fucking Byleth run, which is still the funniest animation on the Switch. Bernadetta, <laughs> I need to talk to you. <laughs> I always did that. I just fucking booked it towards Hilda. I had to see her. Said it. <laughs> we'll talk about three houses another time. Um. Uh, Another great game. It's not Royal, though, so I don't give a crap. Um, Bad game. Yeah, but so... When you sprint in Mementos... I don't know if this applies in Palaces. I tried it a couple times, but usually you're pretty on par with level. Mm -hmm. So it didn't... I don't know how often insta-kill happens in Palaces. But people insist. Yeah. I've never... I, I don't know if I've had it happen before. But yeah, if you sprint at an enemy in Mementos, if they're low enough level... If they're low enough level un under you, like you, you run them over... They instantly die, you get mad cash and mad experience, and you go on with your day. And you just and run you over every result, enemy yeah. mementos, and it's the most satisfying and hilarious thing in the world. <laughs> it's really funny just running them over with the Mona bus. Uh, uh, also, how did it take, thir like, what, 30 years for another JRPG to adapt the Earthbound strategy of, hey, if you're strong enough, you just beat it? Yeah, it's super useful, because, like, Octopath Traveler is a game that I love, and many others don't. It's a good game. Play off the Path Traveler. Also, that game's battle system works in a way where even if you're fighting the weakest of weak enemies, battles will at least take like 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah, it's the Darkest Dungeon kind of thing where the Darkest Dungeon was like, even if it's a really easy enemy, if you're not paying attention, you'll die. Also, Adam, why did I just get a notification on Steam that you're playing Terraria? 
not me, I promise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but so, running over enemies feels super satisfying. One of the things, uh, I don't know if I told you about this, mm -hmm. with, but uh, I was just going through mementos, I wasn't trying to kill any enemies, and then just around the corner, this big, goofy <laughs> shadow walks out, and I ran him over, and on instinct, I just go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! <laughs> Now, I can't take that back. <laughs> it's really funny. It's also a great way to grind for shadows. Like, just try to get all the personas and do the compendium. It's really good. Um, yeah, speaking funny. of gameplay, this is the first RPG, at least that I've played, especially like a turn based RPG. Ignore where... the phone call. Did you? Mm -hmm. Ignore the phone call. Continue. Okay. Yeah, this is the first RPG or JRPG, at least from what I've played where getting to level 99 is viable in the main story and is still balanced. Like, it actually yeah. has, like, a meaning. You're not going to be broken if you get to level 99 by the end. Like, It'll I have my make entire party up there. It'll be easier, but it's yeah. still fair. Because, like, I beat the final boss at level 90. Yeah. Um, And it, it was, I'd say, pretty balanced. I definitely had to think. I mean, I was arguably underleveled, but... Um, yeah, it, it was good. I don't know if you were underleveled. It was... It's, the balancing for that part just seems very adaptable. Mm -hmm. It's a good boss fight. Um, I mean, yeah, if you're playing on normal or lower, then maybe you're going to be dumb and overpowered. But also, that's probably why you're playing on normal or lower. Yeah. Uh, speaking... I, I, I switched to hard once I got to Shido's palace to realize how broken I was because I was too good at the game. Speaking of adaptability, yeah, so all of the palaces have been like revamped with all the quality of life stuff yeah. to be much fresher all the items and weapons and guns and stuff are rebalanced the structure mm -hmm. of the palaces are much more like clear in their difficulty mm -hmm. so it's not like stupid it's just it's probably one of the most balanced games i've ever played yeah it's really good i i want to bring up before we get into palaces i want to bring up the changes to the velvet room oh, i love because yeah. there's so, like, a couple of systems have been changed a bit. Like, where you get things is now different. Uh, like, the dates you get things, a lot of stuff you get later now, but that's because they're better. Yeah. So, like, you get, like, the guillotine later because it's really good now. It's pronounced it was not first of all. So, you get the guillotine way later in the game. And, but, like, it works really well because it's all balanced. And the best mechanic ever is fusion alarms. Fusion alarms are so cool. Because, yeah, the way it works is basically when you do a fusion alarm, everything you do in the Velvet Room is amped up. So, like, you get better items from item fusion, you get better personas from regular fusion, your personas get more levels from guillotine, and it's really good, but the more you do it, the higher the chance is of it failing, which it fails after, like, two attempts on the same machine. Yeah. Which at first I thought was kind of dumb, but then I saw how quickly you get alarms constantly, and I was like, okay, this is fine. Yeah, especially with the insta-kill in Mementos. Yeah. So, and, like, each one has different effects, so, like, because you can keep chaining things if you want, or you can immediately go for what you want. So, like, if you do a regular fusion, it'll randomize one to two of your skills or so, uh, if you mm. choose. You, if you don't want them changed, you don't want to, like, you don't have to. If you mm. do, it'll give you some random thing, usually related to the skill you already had there. Mm. Um, yeah, it'll give you a buff in your actual, like, stats in the uh, Arcana Burst. And if you use that persona you just made to fuse another persona, it will give you a completely randomized persona, but they are specifically designed for one intention. Which sounds weird, but I... Mm -hmm. If you haven't done this before, do it at least once, because mm. it has some really cool results. Yeah. My favorite thing was seeing the guy who fused, I think, they fused, like, Satan, which is one of the most powerful personas in the game, and it just gave them only evasion skills and no attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you got goofy stuff like that. Uh, I got... Which then, of course, can be used as an ingredient to make another great persona, because then you could just put all those evasion skills onto something that actually has an attacking move. No, yeah, by the end, I didn't need them, because I was yeah. kind of min-maxing what personas I was using. But early game, it was really because one of my it was really interesting because one of my favorite personas I got from that maybe not the most useful but one of my favorites was a I forget what it I think it was Mitra 
Mm. And it was a burn specific persona. So it gave skills that raised ailment, like ailment champs. Uh, mm -hmm. I think raised burn champs as its trait, which we'll get to traits in a second. Yeah. Um, it gave me fire skills and wind skills so I could technical off of those fire skills and do extra damage. Yeah. And it's just cool like combinations like that that just are super intriguing and show how awesome persona combinations can be. Yeah, I didn't really use that because, like I said earlier, my my persona team was just using protagonist persona. So for the entire game, I was just using uh, Izanagi, Orpheus, and Arsene, and I just made them all really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and it was it, nope. It, that I, that is also just one of the things I like about persona: the different ways you can play it. And I had a lot of fun with that. I got like this big attachment to these personas I already loved because you know I played all the other games. Yeah, like, you played it like Pokemon. Yes. Uh, yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much. Like, I played, like, Pokemon, and I got this attachment to my Personas. It was really fun. Like, I like that about the way that Persona works. And because of... This is something that Persona 3 and 4 don't really let you do, and it's why I like Guillotine so much, is the ability to beef up the same Persona, give it better skills. So if you want, you can make that god tier Jack Frost you've always wanted. Yeah, you, you can play it however you want. Like, in, in my first P5 run, uh... I, I had all the personas that I was randomly getting and whatnot, or like whatever I fused, and then I just mm. had my level 99 King Frost that I raised from the ground up. Uh, <laughs> the best. And persona. in your first, and in your first playthrough of vanilla, you beat the game by being an idiot, and I still don't know how. I, by by being like level 60 when you fight you out the bell. I was level 54. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I don't know how I almost got every confidant up or how I lived. But Were I you playing on safety but didn't realize it? I was it? playing on hard! <laughs> anyway, you wanna talk about palaces? Uh, I, uh, I, I guess there's still- is there anything else to talk about the Velvet Room? Pretty. It's blue. It is pretty, it's blue. I like it, uh, Carolyn- actually, okay, yeah. Carolyn and Justine have hangouts now, which will give you skill cards, which Honestly, it's not the best reward usually if you get like a good use out of them because you do get some really good ones. That's great. Yeah, the, the late game ones are especially good at getting like Heat Riser yeah. and stuff. They're, they're not the best rewards, but hands down, their hangouts are the funniest part of this game. So they're definitely worth it. And you That's get a secret so scene in third semester if you do all of them. So do that. Yep. Um, beyond that, before we get to the actual houses themselves, now every persona has traits. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. It's yeah, it's like traits persona abilities or not persona. Yeah, it's like Pokemon abilities, except they're actually interesting. Yeah, except yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of personas they can have like unique uh, traits for themselves Play that can be specialized. <laughs> uh, you can like swap between them during fusion to like maximize mm -hmm. whatever you want your fuse persona to do. Or or inherit a worse skill during fusion so that you don't feel bad about using Orpheus, whose trait revives you four times per battle if you die. I'm gonna link a Twitter video in the comments, in, in the description. I, I'm, I'm gonna call it comments every time, because I'm a bad person. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, watch that. <laughs> but so... It's like the comments, except only Adam can, re can write them. So you know it's toxic. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yeah, it ranges from, like, lowering SP costs of certain abilities, increasing crit chance, uh, mm. increasing technical j damage. Uh, if you're Alice, it lets you do one of the best moves in the game for free, for some reason. If you're Arsene, then it's useless. Yeah, if you're Izanagi no Okami, it's integral to murdering the Reaper in a single attack. I love... Look, I wanted to make Pinch Anchor work on Arsene, I just couldn't, there was no reason! <laughs> I tried my best. Uh, yeah, but traits are freaking awesome. It adds a lot of variety of fusion. Like, yeah. fusion was always cool to me, but it was more my brother's thing. It's even more his thing now. But it's <laughs> really enjoyable to, like, go through fusion and see what things you can make. I think that is an understated part of how good of the Persona series, and especially P5 now, is how deep fusion is and yeah. how it works. Okay, a lot of and people getting into Persona are confused mm -hmm. by Fusion, and I understand it, because in my first playthrough, I don't think I understood Fusion at all <laughs> until Same. second run. Uh, but Fusion is really cool if you know how to use it right, 
you can get some crazy good stuff out of it that feels really rewarding mm -hmm. and it's not so complicated to like turn you off at all it's but mm -hmm. it's like when you actually place down what it is it's easy to learn and hard to master mm -hmm. but it's really rewarding in that regard so that's just a compliment yeah. towards persona in general but royal makes it even better and more because yeah like if you don't know much about fusion you could just fuse the highest level thing and be like that's stronger if you want to like really min max it though you got that option yeah it's, it's man you know what's the best part about persona personas i like them We've been recording for 45 minutes. Want to talk about the palaces? Yeah, let's let's do that. Um, yeah. So the palaces are all ch uh, changed up. They mm. are all better. I will not. I will not argue this because no. I know what you all all are going to say. But no, they're all better, especially Okumaras, including the boss fight. The boss fight. Everyone's just bad at Persona. Why do I keep seeing tweets of people saying they... It's like, okay. it's not it's not that it's not hard. It is a hard fight. It's a but challenging it's fight, but it's fair. It's not random. And it requires strategy. It's symbolic. Strategy. It's, it's He actually gets characterized. Okuma was funny. funny this time. No. <laughs> the slutty run one in the red outfit. <laughs> <laughs> the pompous man in the black coat. I love... I love all yeah because now okumura basically this is so that that we'll, i guess we'll talk about that since that's what your audience cares about uh -huh. so the okumura fight's been changed in such a way where now you still fight all the robots and i think my biggest disappointment with the fight is i still wish okumura transformed and didn't just sit in a chair uh, yeah like it's something that now with how unique the fight is i can let it slide Especially i can let it slide more yeah, I still like. I still think I would have liked the idea better of him, like you said, being a puppet master, and like he's this big threatening thing. But once everything's gone, he just loses his power and turns back to chairman. Yeah. I think would have been a neat way of doing it, just to show he looks threatening, but without his lackeys, he can't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, the symbolism of that fight a... is really freaking good too, because next is the symbolism of like you know him ordering his shadows to just do stuff, ordering the robots to just do stuff for him, and not doing anything himself. Sacrificing his daughter to do his bidding. Um, being a douche. <laughs> yes, the symbology. Being a bad person. Uh, one of my favorite aspects, I don't, I don't know how much you noticed this, uh, mm -hmm. but me looking super far into symbolism because I'm a dork. Sure so, yep. What a loser. So the timer is there, which people complain about, mm -hmm. which if you're playing the fight right, uh, it's not that big of a deal. But that's I think I finished it with eight minutes left. Yeah. When I did it right, I had 22 minutes left. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I know people would beat it with 15 seconds left. I think Scruffy did. Um, I had Scruffy Turtles. Yeah. Uh, the best artist. We're going to show him in every video we're both in. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so the timer is up there, which you're like, oh, crap. All these round, like all these enemies keep refreshing when I don't kill them fast enough. I got to mm -hmm. like rush to kill them as fast as possible or the timer's going to go down. You know, just, just like an employee on the clock to do their job and stressing because they need to get stuff done during the time limit and so they don't do it right yeah <laughs> and it overworks them and they die like in big bang burger it's genius maybe i'm looking yeah. too far into this but then again these are the same people who argued that okumura's palace was intentionally bad because working at his like factory was bad which i, I did that. kind of believe until Royal fixed it, and now the palace is streamlined and fun. Yeah. Uh, sweatshop still sucks. Yeah. Okay, sweatshop. I I'm gonna state this. I'm gonna clarify this for everyone. Sweatshop is not a bad song, but it's a bad song to be looping for four hours. But now the palace no longer takes four hours. Sweatshop another version though is just bad. Yeah, sweatshop another version is just tedious. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> compared to every other palace theme, I don't, I can't see a defense for that one. Um. Yeah, man, I'm price. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as for the other bosses, since we're talking about that, the Kamoshida boss fight now, the fact that there wasn't a cognitive Shiho always felt weird. I or think that's Mishima. one of my favorite things. Yeah, or Mishima. I think it's still a bit odd that there's no cognitive Ryuji, but I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I I really like the way they do this now. That that's like one of the, my favorite things that was improved about the palaces is doing way more with cognitions. Cause like after like um what's its name? After Madarame's palace, a lot of those cognitive beings just kind of disappear until Akechi. Yeah, they're just kind of gone. Like so, yeah, the way because like that was the thing like cognitive on was like one of the coolest ways of symbolizing that stuff and foreshadowing who Kamushita was. Yeah, like Waka is like, there, and that's a big cognition, but that's like the exception. And that's like the and like that doesn't show up until like the very end, which is still the case. So yeah, like as far as the bosses go, though, like the Kamushita fight's way more fun because like you have dealing with the cognitive Shihos and uh, Mishima's. Mm -hmm. You have his new attacks. Um. There's cognitive or there's Madarame, who's way easier but way more fun, so I don't care. Yeah, it's a very cool, unique, visually appealing fight, which is perfect. <laughs> and then he can't paint anymore because he's not a good artist, and he dies. Yeah, because like that was the thing. The only thing that was really symbolic last fight before was he's a paint. He's an art. That's he's a it. Paint. <laughs> now, now though, him actually turning into fakes makes a lot of sense having them all be different elements is really cool which yeah. means no matter what team you're bringing in you're gonna have to deal with weaknesses yeah it's significantly easier but it's a lot more interesting i like the old one yeah. a lot this one i like a bit more it was too e it was too it was also just too hard for being the second palace it was okay here's my two cents Monorame's oh difficulty in his boss fight was more of an unfair difficulty spike than okumura's mm -hmm. yeah because i think okumura's because Okuma oh, yeah. is fair in how it's set up. Madarame is just kind of bullcrap. He's also the fifth palace after you've gotten yeah. all eight parts. But you have a lot of stuff at your disposal at that point. You should know how to play the game. Yeah. Um. So after that, Kaneshiro's fight is amazing. Kaneshiro's fight is awesome because he has his first pay, uh, his first phase with Pikitron. I love Pikitron. It's the best. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes to his bodyguards, which. Mm -hmm. The way I handled the fight was kind of weird because I didn't really get what was going on. So I don't, I don't know if you have more analysis than this. I just kind of blanked out. <laughs> I, for that part of the fight, I had Arsene and I used Dream Needle and put it to sleep because that's the whole point. Is you're putting it to sleep and then trying to thwack Kanashiro. Yeah, I just kind of murdered them. <laughs> I, I just, I just slowly beat the crap out of them and then I killed Kanashiro, and then, <laughs> and then he dropped coins on me because he's mean. Yeah, there's that. I like this the whole like it's a, it's an obvious symbolism just which is a lot of that palace. What's wrong, um, Piggy Tron? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really funny. Um, yeah, the fight's cool. Uh, I do like yeah the the last bit of symbolism just being I'm out of money therefore and I have no power. Mm. And then he's like, wait, there's money inside Piggy Tron. I got it. And then he exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um. Before we go on, which this will also kind of be noteworthy for the next palace. So mm -hmm. one of the best new additions to palaces, which, uh, real quick note, one, sneaking feels a lot better. Yeah. Sneaking now that there's like, in general has been a, like smoothed out a bit. Because also like, I don't think, was there specific controls for what you had to target while hiding before? Uh, no. It was just yeah, kind of, if an enemy walked in front of you when he wanted to jump over, you would attack, you would target the enemy. Which, that's something else they fixed about your play with the Okumura Palace, was I think more cover was added to the Okumura Palace, specifically yeah. in that hallway where you pointed out that you couldn't get past the enemy in your video. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they added more stuff to get past. Yeah, the and first now you enemy still targeted me was really funny, but I killed him because SP is a lot more manageable in this game because of all the quality of cha life changes. Yeah. Oh yeah, guns are- GUNS! We didn't mention guns! GUNS! <laughs> guns are like integral. That's thing because everything in your disposal is like integral now. Guns are like one of the coolest. Like Prisons they actually are, are useful in this game and feel yeah. utilized well and they're yeah, completely be revamped. Because guns were always badass and like Joker was always way more associated with his pistol than his knife. Uh huh. But the fact that I could never use his pistol because I ran out of ammo super quick was always an unfortunate thing. Now that ammo actually refills in every fight, it's really fun. Yeah, it fully refills. You just have significantly less of it, but it's balanced, and the yeah. damage has kind of been rescaled. Are they stronger now? They feel stronger. I, they might have buffed damage. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but they're good. I like them, and you can get like different effects for them, and they're like actually customized, cool now. Uh. I guess that also serves as a good transition to what I was going to talk about anyways. Uh, grappling hooks. Those are new. Yep. Grappling hooks, which someone said was underutilized in this game. Who? There's one palace I agree with that on. 
and you might know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but... which is why I was going to transition with that. But yeah, grappling hooks are really cool ways to maneuver. Um, mm -hmm. They let you reach different places a lot of the time. There are some spots where it's just completely like non-linear in terms of how you're going to progress, even though mm -hmm. you know, you're going to the same destination. But do you want to take the grappling hook path, or do you want to take like the regular running path? There's yeah. a couple shining examples of it, and I love them both. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, grappling hooks are super awesome. Uh, with Kasumi's ability, you can ambush people from a distance and put like ailments on them, like at random. Because my, whenever I saw that in the trailer of like, yeah, you can just grapple onto an enemy and kill them, I thought that was going to be overpowered. Seeing how it actually worked in game where you have to be behind them yeah. and they have to have not seen you yet. And you can't be uh, that, hiding. Yeah, like that balanced it out better. So I think it works. It's just cool. No, yeah, it's really cool. It works well. And it's just it just makes you feel epic. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, but those are some of the more like gameplay elements we could go back we think of another one that we just completely forgot to mention uh, but yeah then there's Futaba's you... Palace which uh, do I say it now Michelle and risk being crucified Adam's a bad person he doesn't like the Futaba Palace it's, I, I like it I do like it but uh, the biggest shock of the Adam. century it's no longer Okumaro's Palace is no longer my least favorite it's for Tabas. Adam, why do you hate gamers? <laughs> uh, watch our tier list video where <laughs> Michelle makes fun of the disabled. Oh my god. I did make fun of the gamers, okay? Better than you. <laughs> like I said, the disabled. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Futaba's Palace is probably, like, okay, it's not the least changed. It is the least changed. I, I I mean, unless you count Memento's Depths. That was what I was going to say, because, like, my, the one I was considering to have the underutilization of the grappling hook was Depths, because Depths has basically nothing new in it other than, hey, you can grapple and grab a chest, and that's it. Okay, my whole thing is, in every single palace, I remember, like, one really clear, nice cinematic moment where they use the grappling hook really well. Yeah, that's great. Futabas didn't have that, from what I recall. Like, I don't remember what it was, if it was there. There's the part where you're jumping across the giant statues. Uh, I guess. I remember that, and you used the hook to get up to the thing. Mm -hmm. And, well, you I know you used the grappling hook a few times in, like, that last area past the door to, uh -huh. like, get up to the Okay, the yeah, sorry. There, There is a cool... Uh, you know what? No, I'll, I'll take back that statement. That is actually one of the coolest ones. Because when you're going to fight yeah. Cognitive Wakaba, you get to freaking, like, Sonic 06 jump between a bunch oh, yeah. of different, like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, is it, like, tombstones or something? Or, like, coffin, like, sarcophagus? It's like coffin, yeah, something. sarcophagus, sarcophagus disease. Sarcophagus disease. Uh, Cophagrigus. Uh, I love, I love that guy. I love Mott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you jump around, and it's really cool. I'll give it that. Uh, but the coolest grapple hook moment, or at least one of them, is in Okumura's Palace. And if you can find it and know what I'm talking about, you're a good person. Mm -hmm. I found it. I had to tell Adam about it. He didn't find it on his own. He's got a persona. No, I found it on my own. What are you talking about? <laughs> Let me just take a sip of my water. To... <laughs> <laughs> I'll be okay. <laughs> is that worth it? Yes! <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, but yeah, for Tom's Palace, I did enjoy it, which it's a mm. testament to this game when that's my least favorite palace. Yeah. Because it's really good. The music's great. The aesthetic is great. The boss is, is good. <laughs> the boss is the least changed in the game because, I mean, I guess Yaudabout is basically exactly the same, but also I change Yaudabout. Yeah, but Yaudabout's a great fight. Yeah, uh, the, the Wakaba fight, I think all they really changed was now Futaba guards you from the attacks and like a more specific animation instead of just telling you when to guard. Yeah. Um, Which, like, that's neat. The fight and is a lot less scripted feeling now, but it's also very scripted feeling. <laughs> yeah, it was always like just this. I mean, it's like, it's just like the Risei fight in P4. It's super scripted, but meh. That's not a compliment. Listen, comparing something to the Risei fight is always a compliment. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Futaba is my least favorite in the game. That's a testament to how much improve, like improvement was added to the Okumura Palace. Adam. And are you saying you, um, before uh -huh. you continue, are you saying that you don't like Radar Dish Stripper? <sighs> Let me just 
this. The Okuma Pass is way better now because the puzzles are actually like good. Don't sip again. Don't sip again. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> why do you watch our videos? <laughs> oh gosh. Um. Yeah, Photopolis Palace is really good. It's the worst one, but it's really good. It's not my least favorite. My least favorite is still Akuma's Palace. Okay. But Akuma, I'll. I know we said we're gonna talk about the story later, but you know, pe yeah. people attention spans don't exist. Uh. Yeah. The contents of the Palace's story itself are basically identical, but the lead-up is much better. Yeah. It adds a much better context to it that makes it flow better. It still mm. sucks that Haru doesn't get her moment to shine at the end, but it it's better. Because Haru, it's yeah, she she kind of has a speech when she awakens, but it's so short compared to, like, Yusuke or Makoto. So Even, it's like, does that count? People say that Makoto doesn't have, like, an actual arc or, like, any emotional connection to Kanashiro's palace. People are, people are really smart. Yeah, like, she has her moment when she awakens and when she fights Kanashiro. Like, every other person. Haru doesn't get that. She just kind of walks up to her father right before he dies and she's like, You'll, you'll be fine. That's a thing that I I get Morgana's arc kind of had to happen there, like with the way it's written. But, but it the, didn't I need don't to overshine that moment. It could have been separate. And I yeah I don't think his speech should have happened there because I'm playing through the game again. I was reminded like yeah Morgana still has that really great speech against Yaudabao. You know what they could have done? Actually merged both of their moments if they really wanted to do that instead of just having Morgana have this moment where he shoots the controller out of the hand with the grappling hook and they're all like, yay, Morgana, and they forget Haru's in the room. Did I, did I say grappling hook? You said grappling hook. It's called a slingshot. They shoot him with a grappling hook. Uh. <laughs> uh... You can't do that on YouTube. You can do it on Discord, but we're just talking. We can't do it on YouTube. People are going to sub. It's scary. Uh. Um. It's a moment. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing about the improvement to Akuma's Palace is just the puzzles. Because now, now instead of just, hey, which robot likes chocolate? Now it it's actually so makes more funny. sense. It's so funny. And the symbology works now. It's so good. Is symbology a word? Symbolism. Uh, okay. Listen. No, yeah, like the fact that now it's a bunch of robots who are all scared of their higher ups, but know the, their weakness is higher ups and are just waiting for their moment. No, and yeah, they just all hate their bosses and they're going to trash them and they're going to be like, yeah, if I had the yeah, moment, I'd murder them. Yeah, yeah, they all hate their bosses who make their lives miserable and it all goes all the way up to Akumra, who's the biggest boss. It's really funny. It's really good. The, I mean, sure, the airlock puzzle still doesn't have symbolism, but it's fun, and you can fast forward the cutscene to flying through space. So yeah. who cares? Uh, you can also fast forward the freaking like twenty second doors now, which is great. Woo! The best improvement in the game, son. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, size palace is pretty much the same, but also why I bother changing it? They they got rid of the second part of the darkness base because people are babies. Yeah. I, I, while it flows better, I'd say. Mm -hmm. it, the palace is even shorter now. I do I like really- I still love the casino. It's, what, my third favorite palace in the game? Yeah, for me it is now. Uh, yeah, May 2nd, I don't know. It's it's third for me. It's well, a good palace, though. It's it's now, it's now still just a really good palace. Yeah, her new boss phase is cool. Yeah. Because, uh, again, it still devolves into a regular fight. But mm. now it's actually an interesting fight in terms of the mechanics because she has the big ol' affinity, not affinity, or is it, I guess affinity, like wheel, just all mm. the different elements. And she gets one, if you know the antithesis of that, then you can whap her. Yep. And, he, um, and Sai Nijuma dies. Shido's palace is, is amazing. Shido's is uh, my second favorite in the game. It was, people hate Shido's palace just because the rap puzzle, like in regular five. And I always disagreed with that, because they're really not that bad, and the rest of the palace is so good that I don't get how people can ignore it. And also the uh, rap puzzles were really fun to begin with, I always thought they were cool. Yeah, it's even better now. And they're symbolically interesting. The the royal glow up, like the aesthetic glow of royal just makes it look gorgeous, like mm. even more so. It's beautiful. Ark is a great song. Uh, the rap puzzles are restructured to be a lot less tedious, like they got rid of the one that I know pissed off a lot of 
people. Mm -hmm. uh, where it was just like the big grid. Yeah. They got rid of that one, and I noticed that and just kind of laughed because I didn't hate it, but I, I get why they got. Yeah. Because seeing that will overwhelm anyone. The cheese cut scene is one of the best things in the game. Yeah, the <laughs> like the rat things are now voiced. At least like the opening cutscene with it, you can now like get SP when you're a rat, like if you want, mm -hmm. just by like, eating cheese. And the, uh, the first cutscene where everyone finds the cheese and everyone piles into the same cage and Futaba has to come save you is really oh, funny. Frick. Michelle, why haven't we mentioned Will Seeds? Listen. So, yeah, so I'm palaces really are the best. <laughs> now, like, actually fantastic <laughs> RPG dungeons because they're not super linear. Will Seeds are a thing now. Three collectibles you can get per every palace unless you're Memento Steps. Uh and they're great. You get them all, you get a neat little accessory to use on your party, and it's super useful. You take it to Jose, he gives you a better one, and it's the coolest thing ever, and they give you custom moves, and they all have awesome animation. And they give you HP and SP to help you keep going. Yeah. And that's the thing, because like, that's the other thing about the Okuma Palace, is like, yes, every like 90% of the enemies there still reflect physical, but now that there's way better ways of actually keeping your SP going, it's not as big of a deal. Yeah, like, that's one of the big things that helped Okumura, is even if, like, a lot of the puzzles remain identical to a lot of the enemies, your SP is no, like, no longer as big of an issue. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, it's, it's that, that change is really nice. I also really like, since, since we're on the topic of the palaces, I like that the, uh, the security meter now starts at 40, which means, uh... Oh yeah, oh, yeah has a purpose. Oh yeah, is actually useful, and it means the security meter actually has more. Uh, the security meter is actually going to come into play in some palace that's not Okumura's. Yeah, every feature that was underutilized in regular P5 is now at like full force. So Fisher. <laughs> Wait, you weren't? You didn't spend? Oh, you didn't? You didn't spend every month at the fishing <laughs> pond? I fished with Yuji and Kawakami. That was it. Oh no, I don't think I beat the game. I think I might have gotten the gold fish. <laughs> I think I bought- I, Adam, were you- Adam, were you just playing Stardew Valley? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but Shido's palette's really good. I freaking love it. The new Shido phase is the coolest freaking thing ha the one ever that isn't the final palace. The fi the, that final phase, having this one-on-one -on -one fight with the guy who ruined your life is so good. Yeah. Okay, I, one thing that I I always wanted from Royal after P5, and I'm so glad they went through with it, because this was legitimately probably my biggest request personally, mm -hmm. was more 1v1 fights, because the only time you get that is like what, the, the duels in size? I was gonna say, that and like the the, when the alarm goes off in Madarame's palace. That was basically it. Yeah, that's that's it. Like, otherwise, it's just... And even then, you immediately get your party members back, which feels cool. I like that puzzle. It's, it's a fun puzzle. Is a cool palace. Um, it's a good game. Yeah, but so they added all these new 1v1. There's a duel with a catchy in Alphadon, which is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. And I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 good. Um, He's such a douche. He is a bad person. It, yeah, one v one with Shido, mm -hmm. and a one v one with the final palace owner, technically. Mm -hmm. which is... <clears throat> it's real good. So there's that. Uh, I guess next palace is Depths, which that to me was the one. Like I I always love the Depths in terms of its plot, but it I got... change up a little. It it visually looks a lot different. It changing a lot more to match actual mementos. Mm -hmm. My thing with depths, that the I, I went through that whole place's structure, and the, uh, there wasn't a single part where I was like, there was basically nothing that I, where I was like, this looks new, except like those little offshoots where it's like you can use a grappling hook here, and if you get past the hard enemy, there's a chest. Uh, that's fair. I will say one of my favorite tiny additions that really mm -hmm. happy is in memento steps because there's actually like gameplay after that point yeah they added little like ornaments like that you can steal treasure from yeah but they're shaped like the cubes mementos that you pick up on in your car yeah 
and that was like a cool little like addition. Yeah. That just made me a little all giddy because I'm a baby. The, I will say, even if there was like basically no interesting grappling hook mechanic in that palace, it's made up for at the very end where you use the grappling hook instead of just running down the stairs where Joker grapples and then slides down the ramp. Yeah! I was like, all right, all right, fair enough. I didn't need the grappling hooks. I had this. <laughs> it's time. Uh, man. The Holy game. Grail fight's still great. The part where your party members disappear, even if I knew what was coming, still hurts. Yeah. Okay, that's the thing. This is a slower discussion for the royal stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm making a royal review, just to make that clear. And I'm covering mainly the new stuff. I'll cover a little bit of the stuff as well. Mm -hmm. But, like, base game is still there, and it's still fantastic. Still a bang. I love it. Um, oh frick! They added photos to the text menu! Ah! I can't remember that now! <laughs> no, yeah, the photos that are added to the text menu are just really fun. They're all really cute. Adam missed one somehow. I don't know how. Um, <laughs> um, it's really good. They're really I fun. guess the, real quick, before we go on to Yout about, let me name a couple random notes. I just... Okay. The, the font is different now. Uh, I like the new font a lot more. It was really... Yeah, the new font was weird when I first saw it in, like, teaser images. Now I... Old one. Yeah. Um, there's, like, new text boxes. They're, they're a lot nicer. There's ones for, like, shouting and stuff. Yeah, it's the shouting really text cool. boxes. There's all that. There's new portrait images, and they're all great! Especially Ryuji's. Bill smile and his fucking huh face are yeah, so good. All, all, all of them are great. He's actually uh, a I... Muppet. I can't look at Morgana's old portrait They're anymore. They're so ugly, comparatively. Okay, it doesn't look bad, but it's... With how I I see Morgana now, I can't see the old one because I do now associate him with the more cutesy design. I feel like it matches up a bit more. Mm -hmm. The old one had the sass factor, which was still proper, but uh, he has, like, much stubbier arms and legs now as well. Mm -hmm. So the old one looks kind of uncanny. Yeah. It's a little too humanoid comparatively. It, it is. Um, Just got his little noodle arms. All the all the new sprites are great. I really like. I love On's like super smiling sprite. I love. It, it's kind of weird looking because her eyes are like so bright in that in the yeah. one sprite, but her her freaking shocked sprite I really still like. No, yeah. Were her eyes always that bright? I mean, they were always meant to be brighter than everyone else's because blue mm -hmm. eyes are just a western because trope she's in anime. one of them aryans <laughs> yep that's her um the whitest woman of life. <laughs> okay listen um yeah that Billy's was great uh any other like little notes that you want to bring up um the game is good it's a good game it's a good game it's a good game yadamouth fight's still the best thing ever um yeah but now friggin you don't go to prison uh, unless you're stupid and didn't hang out with the new confidants. What's wrong with you? Why did you buy the game? What's wrong? Do it. Do it, and don't be mean to Akechi. Be like, I want to be his friend. But legit, do, do it. Do it! Yeah, so, Twitter, it's Twitter time. Slide. Third... Is that a reference to something you want to talk about? Uh, you want to send me... We can uh, play the video. Is... <laughs> we, can, we can look at it if you want. I guess I just, it's the reference to Gravity oh. Falls. Oh! <laughs> Adam, OBS is recording my computer audio. I could just start playing your video. <laughs> please don't do this. Please, please don't. Okay, third semester starts off earlier than I thought and so good. It's. Yeah, so basically now, as long as you max, it's like as long as you got as high as you could with Kasumi, Maruki, and Kechi, and uh, after, like once you do the Shido Pass, you get two options. You have to choose the second one with the Kechi and be like, I want to fight him again. Um, then now, whenever Sai walks up to you, Kechi's glove. Yep. Now when a catch or now when Sai walks up to you and is like. Hey, I need you to turn yourself into the police so we can arrest Cheeto. Goro Akechi walks up and is like, I'll do it. And you're like, huh, that's pretty neat. Thanks, bud. So that was cool. And now, and then like you have a real Christmas party. You have a real Christmas date with your girlfriend, which is the purest thing. And 
Uh, yeah, and then third semester starts, and Morgana's a human, and it's scary, and Oziak is typing in Discord. He, he broke it. God damn it. What a fucking loser. Okay. We're good. I think <laughs> my, you fixed it. My, uh, my recording software kind of exploded. What uh, a loser. Excuse you. Okay, so we were talking about Akechi goes to jail. Yeah, Akechi goes to jail. No... Does, does not pass go and you know you get your christmas date you get all like just the happy stuff happens you know like all those people on twitter wanted everyone and... wanted their fun persona 4 antics you know like the persona 4 antics where it didn't progress the plot at all and it was really not fun and it was pointless and it's the reason that persona 4 golden is not that good of a remake anyway um Ooh, got him <laughs> no yeah all that stuff's great then you wake up the next morning there's a fucking full-grown man cuddling you, and you're like, what the fuck is this shit? Well, yeah, because that was your fantasy, not mine. So, Adam had sex with Morgana. Oh, and gosh! And after that, <laughs> and after that, like, all this, it's it's really neat, and it's scary. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, so you're just like, why the fuck are these people alive? Who's he? And then a catchy walks in and is like, something's up. He's got all these new fucking done with it sprites that are so good. I still hate that scheming smile sprite. It is honestly, other than Ryuji, a catchy's new sprites are probably my favorite in the game. They're really good. See, I like you have like this whole thing like you have to do this plan with a catchy, uh, and because he knows you end something up, is up. Yeah, he knows something's up. And you go, what ends up happening is you, Kasumi, and him go to that palace that you found earlier in the game that yeah, just kind of happens. Yeah, it's a bit, it's kind of weird where it's placed, but I get it. Mm -hmm. um, so the three of you go there to investigate. And then uh, everyone cried. And... You want, you want to uh... talk about, you want to talk about Yoshizawa? So Samire. Yes. Um, for those of you who, for some reason, are watching this game, or this video, this, this game, this, this is a game, game. yeah, this is the game. Those who, like the two people who are watching this video, who have not played the game but still want to watch my discussion of it. So Why? Kasumi is not Kasumi. She is Samira. She is Sumire. Where is Sumire? Samira Yoshizawa, the sister of Kasumi, who died in a car crash. While the Does... whole game, she leads you on to believe it's the she... opposite. She is Sesame, she's Sesame Seed Yoshi's Island. <laughs> I'm shockingly proud of that April Fool's video. I shouldn't be, but I am. <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so Sumire was actually not, Sum or Kasumi was not Kasumi, she was Sumire, because Kasumi's dead. Yeah, it's one of the most heartbreaking scenes in this game. There are a lot of those, but it's up there. Uh, it will crush your heart. And she's sad. Samira is great. When she actually shows who she is, she is one of the best characters in the series. I love her. She has one of the coolest backstories. Uh, but, mm -hmm. but before you find out she's Samira, you find out who owns this palace. Right. So, you <laughs> are reintroduced to the best character in the entire Persona series. Not exaggerating, unless you count Joker. Uh... Takato Maruki, Takuda. Yeah. Takato Maruki, we, we agreed on this. Yeah. Maruki, Maruki. Ah. Mon monkey. Monkey. Uh, Marky Jones. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. The rest of this video is just gonna be us doing this. Okay. Marky is the best character in Persona. I will not. I'm not taking a debate on this. Joker is I like probably a step on. above. You're wrong. It's Maruki's better. Um, so he owns this palace. And. Which you kind of end up. Which, like, the game makes it in such a way where it's not painfully obvious, but if you're paying attention, once you go into that palace for a second time, you could figure out it's his. Because, like. You can also kind of predict that something's gonna happen with him, anyways, based on his yeah. confidant. Yeah, because his confidant kind of ends on, like, this vague note of him being like, we will meet again. His whole confidant was about research, which is what all the shadows there are talking about. Mm -hmm. And they're all, and, like, there's people who seem to be looking for, like, this good thing, which is also what he was talking about. Yeah, so people were saying they wanted their sympathetic Persona 5 villain. 
uh, some people th said they wanted Kamashita to be that villain. Now, those people are terrible. Yep. Uh, but we finally got our sympathetic villain, other than Akechi. Cry. And Maruki is too good for this game. Uh, th this 11 out of 10 game with a 12 out of 10 character. He Holy is... Crap. <laughs> That whole scene where you run into him for the first time, learn that he's the person behind this palace, and behind all of the weird shit happening of all of your friends' dreams coming true, but nothing, none of it being quite real. Mm -hmm. It's so well done. It's so... Ooh. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, the, way it, the way he's introduced is great. He's, he's got, like, this... Like, he's kind of got this threatening aura, but he's always welcoming, and he wants you yeah. to agree with him. Because you know he's a good guy. The whole time, you're pr most people, I feel, should be pretty assured. He is a good guy. He has earnest intentions. He genuinely... He is a parallel to the Phantom Thieves, because he, too, is rebelling against the unjust system. It's mm -hmm. just... The difference is... Is that... Whether or not he's right depends solely on your own definition of what reality is. Mm -hmm. So, he is a like he is technically not wrong in what he's trying to accomplish i've seen multiple times the argument about original p5 that the game isn't deep and they should stop and like persona should stop pretending that persona 5 should have stopped pretending that it was deep and just been a fun time with good battles and like like i saw someone say like i want scramble to not pretend it's deep and just be a fun like musu and good thing it's both deep and a fun musu it's just, yeah, like I don't I, I don't understand the argument that Persona 5 doesn't have any depth behind the surface of its story. I guess you could say a style over substance. I guess you could say it's style over substance. Just gotta take a sip. I guess you could say it's <laughs> No, Maruki's like the best thing ever. That fight is incredible like because then you fight like one of his shadows after after seeing who Sumire really is which is ow yeah uh, after all that happens you know maruki basically gets one of his shadows to fight you uh so it's just you and akechi fighting him you can't you know the the, the boss kind of just heals itself and then you get the best showtime attack in the game we forgot to mention showtimes oh my gosh yeah there's two much are a thing jose there's so much new content. Jose gives you the wishing star because because he does. Because he's good. Because he's Jose. He's a good good job. Uh, good job. And it lets you fulfill whatever you feel. It lets you fulfill desire. It's a wishing star. It's a wishing star. And it's a MacGuffin. Exactly. Except no, that's not what a MacGuffin means. But you're a you're you're a, you're a McMuffin. Listen here. So uh, Morgana simps for on, and then he simped so hard that God answered his prayers, <laughs> and he got a new attack with her. Mhm. Mm so yeah, showtimes are super flashy. The way that is that is something really funny. I've always loved Morgana. I think he's a fantastic character. Morgana's so Hates good. He's a, he's especially great in Royal. The way that they've continued to build upon his simping for on in this game is really funny. It's great. That's like, I've always, I've never understood the argument. I, 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 I mean, I kind of get it, but I've never really thought that him having a crush on on was annoying. I've always thought it was funny. What's and the it's difference especially... between Morgana and Yosuke? Uh, the difference is that Morgana's funny. And <laughs> Yosuke, can you stop sending me freaking perverted? You stop making perverted <laughs> jokes over past midnight. Yeah, no, it's I love the the Showtime attacks. They're all great. My favorite is a catchy and Joker's, but ooh, Ryuji and Yusuke's. Ryuji and Yusuke's is up there. It's so funny. Wrestling Haru, yes. I know you love. Wrestling, yeah, because Haru drop kicks you. And on hits you with or not on. Makoto hits you with a chair because I guess JRPGs just have cute girls hitting you with chairs now do you think that do you think that like that showtime was just trying to appeal to like the mega bottoms who constantly just wanted horror to step on them i really thought you were going to say it was just trying to appeal to the male fantasy and i was going to agree <laughs> it appeals to the male fantasy <laughs> um 
<laughs> yeah, show times are cool. But cool. also, yeah, mega bottoms, I feel it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You, they're, I show like times. this game. Also, all it's the a... interactions when you get them are awesome. They're like, all... Ryuji trying to get Makoto to do the Fist of the North Star thing with him is so funny. Fist of the Phantom Star. Yeah, in the gallery, they're all named after movie references. And Which even then, that's, uh, they, they keep saying, like, Fist of the North, Fist, Fist of the Phantom Star, but in... What, what is it actually called in the, the thing? It's like... Uh, I have no clue. I forget. Yeah, they're all, like, great movie references, though, and they're really funny. Yeah, I, I forget a lot of them. But they're mm -hmm. all just mega appreciable. Uh, um, to carry on, uh, Maruki, yes. Maruki, yeah, that freaking the fight's great. Then you leave, and then, then, then you get to be Ghost Joker for a week. Okay, so the basis of this statement, <laughs> when I first got to third semester. Yeah, so, so what, what you have to do now is basically you're trying to break your friends out of their trance and make them realize that they're not living in reality. Yeah. Now you're wearing so the Filbert jacket from BoJack Horseman. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you look like a complete creep. And you're walking up to all your friends who are just having a good time hanging out with their family. And y you walk up to Futaba and you're like, Hey, Futaba, how's your mom doing? She's like, oh, uh, she's good. She's standing right there. You could ask her. Yeah, uh, is she alive? Um... Yeah, what? What's wrong, Joker? I'll be waiting for you. Joker, Joker, what are you talking about? And then he leaves. <laughs> and he does that no. for a week straight. <laughs> no, because the thing is, when you walk up to the person, when you walk up to the person, you're trying to just, like, give you these vague statements, because you're not just straight up telling them something's wrong. You're trying to get them to break out of it themselves. Break out um, of it? Yes. And it's so, you're trying, because they're thieves in a palace, and <laughs> what they do, lies. yeah, and, yeah, basically, you're trying to get them to, like, get out of their trance, but what's so funny, is you're giving them these vague statements, and they're kind of like, what are you talking about? And then at the end, you can say one of two things, which is something, either something specific to that character, or just, or, I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Yeah, or just, I'll be waiting for you, which I did- I only said that to On. I said it to every single one of them. Adam, it was the funniest thing everybody. in the world. That's the best part of third semester. None of the- none of the Maruhi stuff. None of the Sumeru stuff. Just Ghost Joker. Ghost Joker. <laughs> cause that's like- cause it's like- it's, he's like this ghostly visage who's the only person who knows what's going on. It's so funny. Yeah. Okay, um, real quick, in the moment where I completely died, did you mention the, uh, the prison uniform school oh that yeah, yeah that's that's one thing. of the that's probably one of the coolest tent, like uh tone setters i've ever seen that's also an allusion to it being maruki since when you wake you up you wake up in, in the office. nurse's office yeah. yeah you wake up in the nurse's office you're following the butterfly you're hearing all the wishes that your friends told maruki yeah and then you leave and ooh, it's good it's all spooky. It's really scary. I'm scared. It, it's that one level of Hotline Miami, like I said to you. <laughs> Gotta get a grip. <laughs> it's it's really good. No, but it's really good. And mm -hmm. also, um, I, I I'm not I'm I, I don't like Nagito Morgana. That that was upsetting. Okay, I have not confirmed who the voice actor is, but it has to be the Nagito voice actor. No, I know it is. Yeah. I, I I know it's, I know it's Tim. Yeah, the the famous fact. voice actor behind Nagito Kometa. Uh, Kir uh, Kazuto Kirigaya, otherwise known as Kirito from Sword Art Online, and other miscellaneous roles that might make you run. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the guy from, like, those three episodes of My Hero Academia. Anyway. Uh, I forget his name. Jason? Justin something? Him. He's cool. I, I know, I, lo I love his voice actor, oh, like you pointed it. It might start with a B. I don't care. Listen, I love- I, I do care, but not enough for, to Google it. Um, no, I love that voice actor. He is fantastic. And as you pointed out, that voice does make sense for, like, an older Morgana who's, like, it a human. It super well. But also, I- but also, having played Danganronpa, I hate Nagito- Nagi- I hate Nagito yeah. Mangana. Tiny but hilarious nitpick. When you talk to Morgana outside of the freaking- He's got the normal apartment. voice. Yeah, he's got the- So you just walk up to this, like, really handsome dude, just kind of, like, around your age, just looking at you, just- 
<laughs> yeah, he's got the, the normal friggin' voice. Also, I want to point this out. So, I, I, I bought Special Edition, which means I have the art book. I didn't look through it to avoid spoilers. Mm -hmm. uh, as it turns out, there's very little in terms of spoilers. I'd say the only major spoiler is that um, Sumire's second tier persona is in here. Uh huh. Other than that, there's basically no spoilers in it. Uh, did and... it show the, uh, the Sandri not Sandrion, uh, Takuto's, uh, like, Mementos outfit? No. Okay. It just shows the, it just shows, like, the concept art of his normal attire. Mm. Um, but what's really funny, because they were trying to not spoil anything, um, for, there is, like, the concept art of Mangana, but it just says Studly Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's really funny. And it, it's also really upsetting like there's all the concept art for like the new costume. But Sojuro's in particular, it's just his render from P5 with new clothes drawn over it, and it's really upsetting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You'll I see it, because like you said yet. Yeah, you said you ordered the book, right? Yeah, I just bought it separately because someone had to buy the special edition. I'm really happy for you if you like the game. Um <laughs> I liked it. It came with a mask. The mask is cool. Yeah, I didn't have um, it's I no, yeah, it's YouTube stonks. <laughs> it's not that. It's not that. No, but yeah, the, the, I love because like after that week's over, you have to go back with a catchy, and you know you go back to the palace with a catchy, and you have this cutscene of all of your friends realizing what's going on, and I love that scene. I love the animation of them realizing of like just the glass yeah, shattering. Yeah, glass shatters. Uh, human Morgana is gone, and I was like, eh. huh? Wait, Morgana, why were you a human? You're, you're supposed to be a cat. Yeah, I, okay. I, I know no, I, I had also, a tad. I also, I, I was gonna say, I do like that joke of him being like, I'm not a cat. Wait. Oh, wait, yeah, I guess I am. No, uh, I also, it, it's not a huge thing and it's not fully done with the game. I like that it doesn't, because of the way that arc goes, the game no longer ends with Morgana saying he wants to go with Ren to maybe find out how to become a human. Mm -hmm. He is way more accepting He's of just content. being a cat. Yeah, which I like. Mm. I think it's a good way to end his arc. Um. Yeah, but so speeding had just a bit. They mm -hmm. go back in. Uh, they confront Maruki. He's like, "Yeah, so are you gonna join? Like, are you gonna accept my idea world or not?" So and then you say yes because ending. you want to see the bad ending. You get the true ending, and there is no bad ending. There's yeah, that's what the we thing. deem the ideal ending. Yeah, we called this. Yeah. I think you could either call it the ideal ending or the realization ending. Actualization, I think it is. Actualization, yeah, yeah. the actualization ending. I, I call it the ideal ending because it's like the name of the song. Um, and it, it's very fitting. And you brought this up. I don't know if this was intentional, but it does feel like it could be a very intentional nod sort of to the all the people who said this game should have ended happier. This yeah, was like, it should have... Why didn't he just stay in uh, Shibuya? Why didn't he just live in Young and Jai all his life? And the answer is because life is hard. Life is hard. Uh, you gotta change and move on and grow and do stuff. And you can't always be with your friend. Bye, Michelle. <laughs> oh. No, yeah, but, like, having this whole alternate ending where... For those who have not seen the bad ending, go look it up on YouTube right now. Where... Now, Joker just is like, yeah, I'm going to stay here forever. Yeah, all my friends are going to go to the same school. Yusuke is going to transfer here. Everyone's going to have fun. Akechi's not a bad guy anymore. It's a fantastic and ending. Marky is such a good guy, but man, is he scary when he does this crap. <laughs> that final that final shot of him, like, I'll Spinning take the picture the of the guy in the... Yeah, man in cap. Of him taking the picture, all of them being like, thank you, and him just, thank like, you. waving the hat. And it's like, it's all so... I do in real... <laughs> And well, also like having it be like the jo like all the people like huddling around the phone, and as Joker's turning around, you get like that white noise of him being like, "Something's wrong." Yeah. But then deciding to just accept. Mm -hmm. And then the credits version of Ideal and the Real, having all those pictures that you get of everyone's happy life. And it hurts your soul because you're ripping that away from them. Because you're rip. Well, one is the fact that you know you have to rip it away from them, and two is the fact that you know it's not real and that yeah. this isn't. Right, because that's the other thing about having this happy ending. It trivializes the hardships they went through. Which is why it's supposed to be wrong. Yeah. And Sumire covers that with what she says to him at the end. Yeah. So, yeah, moving forward, past that ending. So you do confront him, you fight him, Ryuji runs in and blocks- No, you don't fight him. Sorry. You fight Sumire's yeah. persona. You fight, you fight Sumire because she is, like, desperate to hold on to being Kasumi. 
Yeah. Because she is freaking going through some trauma. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're fighting. He makes her go all wild crazy with his spooky tentacles. Ryuji runs in, being the mega chatty is and help. I love that scene. We hadn't brought that up when we talked about this yesterday. Ryuji coming in to save you is one of my favorite things. It's really good. It's so good, him saving you. And I love that Mementos dialogue of Akechi being like, hey, like very begrudgingly saying thank you for saving me, and Ryuji just being like, uh, I was trying to save Joker. <laughs> I haven't seen that. No, it's really funny, because Akechi is just begrudgingly kind of putting aside his pride to like be like, fine, you did save me, thank you. And, Ak and Ryuji just being like, uh, I didn't do it for you. It was for, yeah, I don't even know you. Um... It was really, it's good. And yeah, having all your friends come in and save your ass is so good as they broke out of, like, their trance. Yeah, to kind of skim over it, because I kind of... You, you know I want to get to the end of that palace. We have to talk about the palace itself, though. Because you go to Mementos, <laughs> Mementos has changed. It's mm -hmm. gorgeous. The new theme is great. Mm -hmm. uh, you find out he wants to, again, make the entire world have this just ideal paradise with nothing to complain about. So you go into the quote-unquote unnamed palace or the laboratory of Sor uh, sorrow i think it is yeah it's the best palace in the game which yeah getting that first will seed seeing it called will seed of sorrow and me just being like oh he's so it's it's the best palace uh... it's the best one in the game mm -hmm. so because it has all these just fantastic moments just all the puzzles are great super nice symbol like symbolism of like I it's gorgeous it's gorgeous. The theme. Symbol I, I, I don't know if I call it my favorite palace theme, but it's it's really good. There's two versions of it again. Finally, after like three palaces of not having that. A gentle madman and uh, the other out of one. kindness, I think. Out of kindness, yep. Which can be both with very ways, fitting names. That's great. Um. The puzzles are fun, even if as even if from what I can tell, the light one isn't really symbolic. Unless you thought it was something it's symbolic of. No, but it's the best maze puzzle in the game. It's really cool. It's really cool. The giant statue of the girl in there is just upsetting. Oh, yeah, Rumi. Speaking of Rumi, you get to see his backstory is all uh, like... Stuff. Actually, I'm gonna, Except I'm better. gonna censor that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but so... Yeah, you get to see backstories akin to like... Some Persona 4 stuff. And it just is crushing because you find out the origins of his powers. You find out that he has a persona. Uh, yeah. Again, showing more parallels to the Phantom Thieves. And just. You find out how he lost his girlfriend, how he lost oh, everything he, trying to do this. He gave away everything trying to solve this problem and trying he to lost make his the best out of the world. He lost his girlfriend. He lost his college opportunities. He lost any funding you would have gotten for making this research a reality he the only reason and he was, crap yeah the only reason he was still doing it was because he wanted to make the world a perfect place he wanted to make sure nobody had to go through the suffering he did that scene of him drunk in the restaurant is so upsetting mm -hmm. again the parallels between maruki maruki and joker are ridiculous the fact that this game I've always said that Joker was one of the best is one of the best, most interesting Persona 5 characters, despite being mute because and people can't read between lines, which means nobody else agrees with me. Um you know, like how everyone says that Byleth is a boring protagonist because there's because no they justice haven't in this played world. The church route and are not... No, because they haven't played the game at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's upsetting. So there's that. Like Joker is fantastic in this palace. They gave Joe like if someone could play through Royal and still tell me that Joker's a boring blank slate, I will actually fucking deck you. <laughs> no, Press X to strike. Get to that. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of puzzles. One of the really cool ones is the uh, quiz. psychoanalyzing quiz, which is really interesting. It gives such good insight into the character. Yeah, the the fact, I didn't expect the correct answer to that last question to actually be changing hearts. Yeah, with the fan of Thieves. It shows more parallels! Even oh! Such a good character. Oh yeah, my, my gosh! Because I remember my guess I actually went with was like, do nothing, right? No. Mm. I got it on a whim. Yeah. Uh, It's so good. 
I love that Ryuji was right, though. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, oh, yeah, one of my favorite jokes. Because did you actually, like, talk to everyone and get the conversation, like, figure it out, or did you just get it? Uh, I had to play through it twice. Uh, okay. Once on my own, once with my brother. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. The my first favorite... time, I kind of just guessed out of curiosity. The second time, I had my brother talk to everyone. My favorite part of that conversation is you go and talk to everyone, and Ryuji is just dead set on, like, it's changing hearts, duh. Yeah, and we're gonna, like, chill. God, no, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite thing is Akechi being like, does anyone with a br does anyone with a brain have an idea? And Ryuji just says, hey, man, don't insult Morgana like that. <laughs> I didn't cut off that! So funny! Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Ryuji's the best. <laughs> Ryuji, Akechi, Morgana, I love everyone. Um... Yeah, so the palace itself, it's gorgeous, Such a, has <laughs> two great themes associated with it. It's probably, would you say it's the longest palace? Maybe. It's I mean, like up there with Shido's. But it's I mean, also, I mean in, the, in terms of the palace, you're including like the 16 floors of mementos you have to do in that since it is required. Um, I mean, I guess, if you count that, then definitely. I mean, it Even is connected to that know. palace completely, so yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's long. But it's super memorable. It's mm -hmm. super good. It's super fun. Uh, all of the persona designs in there, I believe, are new. There's like one or two old ones, I think. Because like I know like the skull with the snake thing. That's an old one. Uh huh. Um, yeah, there's a couple of old ones, but like they're all, like all those, all like the new, yeah, like all the old designs are like pretty well known, very powerful personas. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a good palace. It's good. And then you secure the route. And Maruki comes to your house. Uh, no, because that's the whole thing is like you, you realize it's like, okay, Maruki wants a fair fight, which means he had and he and he knows about the calling card. He doesn't even which want means, to fight. Yeah, he has to approach you. Yeah, he just wants to talk this out. So he calls you. Like cause you're like, yeah, when's Maruki in the call? He's gonna contact us somehow, right? And then you're just kind of texting your friends, and all of a sudden you get a call, and the music cuts out entirely, and you're just like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, sorry for uh, sorry for contacting you so late. Hey, uh, I'm downstairs. You want to talk?" No, yeah, he's like, "I'm nearby. I'll be there in a couple minutes." Um, yeah, let's talk about this. And the music is completely silent for that entire thing. And they give you time to prepare, but there's nothing to do up there except prepare yourself emotionally because you yeah, all there is to, to do all there is to do is save. And be like, whoo boy, and just get ready for your brain. Yeah, so you have that confrontation. You're sitting there having a nice little chat. And he's like, yeah, is this the only way we can settle things? And you're like, yeah, I have to do this. And he's like, yeah, sorry about this. So a catchy was dead? <laughs> no, no, here's, no, my fair part of that is being like, this doesn't just involve you. Isn't that right? And you just kind of like, oh yeah, Akechi's just talking. standing outside. Yeah, and he's like, uh, so you knew I was there? Eh, it was a hunch. <laughs> he knew. So yeah, he, he turns out they didn't actually bring a catchy back to life. Because I remember pretty much like right before that whole scene happened, I remember thinking to myself, I remember because I was like, I didn't really want them to bring a catchy back to life. And I thought it was going to be a dream thing from the beginning. Yeah, that, was, I, that was both of our theories when we first saw like the original trailers. Because I didn't really want them to bring a catchy back to life. Then after playing the palace, I was like, you know what? I'm okay with a catchy being alive because of how they did this and how good it is. And then he wasn't alive. <laughs> I at that point I already I had already predicted he was just straight up dead and I, I was I was content with it because the way they use him is so freaking good because Mark is just like yeah your relationship is very unnatural because that that's what I love about the way that this palace is done as you're going through it it keeps giving you more and more reasons to question what you're doing and think maybe Maruki's right and that final decision is realizing if I do this Akechi is dead for good yeah it's and that gives you another chance again to get that bad ending or the mm -hmm. ideal ending mm. and then you secure the route and mm -hmm. you have I believe start playing after I you believe get all the third oh yeah third let's talk about that real quick third tier personas Third tier personas. Uh, okay, so if you think about third tier personas, one, they're all god tier, fantastic designs. I love them all. My I love favorite. Every one. My favorite is what's what's your favorite? Because mine's on. I mean, Silvestine not counting is Raul. the best. 
Uh, Even counting Raul, I probably picked Celestine, but Raul was really good. <laughs> I, I get your preference for Celestine. She is really high up there for me. She's probably like third place if I do count Raul. The big heart hair. Not counting Raul because he's just DLC. Uh, William. Mm -hmm. William is so good. If I if you forced me, if you put a gun to my head and forced me to pick a least favorite, it's probably Kasumi's for me. No, I was gonna say Futaba's. Yeah, um, I, I like the triangle thing. Uh, yeah. cause for me, it's probably either Futaba or, as much as I love it, Agnes. Uh, I really like Agnes, so I can't do that to her. If I, I think pick, like, a bottom three, it's, like, Alizif, uh, Lucy. I'm sorry, Haru, but Lucy is very good. And then, mm. uh, friggin', what is it, Ella? I, I love Ella so much. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. I keep forgetting that... Uh, Akechi gets a third tier. No, Akechi, I, I, that's like, that's what I was gonna say. I didn't expect Akechi and Kasumi to get third tiers. I knew he would, I didn't expect uh, Kasumi to. Mm hmm. I love Akechi's third tier of just like actually combining Loki and uh, Robin Hood is really good. Because mm -hmm. also, that's the other thing I love. Going back to Akechi, the fact that they decided, all right, we are going to for this third semester completely ditch the the pure the pure facade, and we're just going to make him a vindictive, cynical piece of shit who hates everyone. Yeah, and, and it's perfect. And because yeah, through the soft boy Akechi cult, because he he fights because like he he's wearing the black mask. He's going insane during every fight. Just also another great little detail, which is why it's hurts even more that they couldn't write a few more lines to make the five days where Morgana's gone work better. Mm -hmm. The fact that Akechi, for like only, I don't know, less than an hour of gameplay, they recorded a bunch of lines to make him the navigator, which are all fucking hilarious and perfect. <sighs> Another mask. How many more do you need? <laughs> no, I am not brainwashed! No, they're so good. <coughs> His lines are all so funny. Um, but they all work so well, and it makes perfect sense that since he's gotten completely gotten rid of the good boy facade, he can't use Robin Hood anymore. Yeah, it's it's very good. And then, you know, character arc, when he finally has that moment where you solidify that bond again and do get that original connection you had, Robin Hood returns and merges with Loki, mm -hmm. and you get freaking, uh, was it Harroward? Sound like that, yeah. And he's great. He's like Batman. Yep. But actually cool. It's the Batman. I, I like Batman. Yeah. Where's my Persona Batman Arkham spinoff? That'd be neat. Uh, yeah. No, that 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 Persona is great. And then you go infiltrate the palace. And I believe, which is now probably... It is my favorite Persona song ever now. Now that I know the context of when it plays, it is my new favorite Persona song. It's in my top three. It is so good. It's triumphant. It's so perfect. I love it so much. Then you fight Maruki. It's... Imagine the original Madarame fight mixed with... Uh, Okumura's new fight, and mixed with Yaudabout's fight, and mix those all together and make it really 20 funny. times better. And then it's it's diff it's really hard because it takes some legit strategy. The fact you have your party members who th there's also the fact that unlike the old Madarame fight, you know he do he doesn't absorb anything; he just reflects it. But you can still use the all-encompassing attacks now. Yeah. Because pretty much all of your personas are going to be blocking that ability, at least for your party members. Or you could do what I did, because my thing, I, I had, like, Joker charge. It, it was, like, two turns into the fight. I had Joker charged up, and I was like, I bet some of these reflect gun, but I'm going to use ri I'm gonna use Riot Gun and just see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I died. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I was like, I just started the fight, and I can resume. I, I can never resume died to fight. him, but it was a really cool ordeal. Yeah, oh, by the way, if you're using Izanagi no Okami, which you probably shouldn't be for the main game, uh, mm -hmm. don't use Myriad Truth on his fight. It will ruin the fight and make it significantly less memorable. Don't use it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so much better without breaking it.
Because like, I was like, I was really powerful. I, I had like, pretty much all of Joker's personas were like level 99 or close to it. It was still hard. I don't know, his ability to like cancel out different moves and him summoning Azathoth, which I'll get, I'll mention something about him in a second. Azathoth, I love your boat. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just a fantastic fight all around. And you have, I think it's a uh, Keep Your Faith is the instrumental that plays. There's yeah, keep your faith plays, which is perfect name, perfect song. It's such a good boss theme. And then you beat him. Also, the whole time, I love that Maruki is trying to persuade the party members that you have in your party because like he was yeah, because he he was saying to each of them like because like for me, I had Ryuji on and Makoto because that's my boss team. And then you know he was like Ryuji, don't you want to run with the track team on? You want to help your friend Makoto? You want to see your father, right? And, you know, all of them being like, no, I have, I'm fighting for my own life. Yeah. Uh, real quick note before I start crying. Uh, yeah, so, quick note about uh, Azathoth and the third semester in general. So, I was writing a, uh, to, to kind of deal with what, writer's block, I was re I have been writing a Persona-inspired story on and off uh, that I came up with two years ago, maybe more. And mm -hmm. the main antagonist was Azathoth, and the main, uh, air, the main like themes were dreams and ideals. So apparently, I am at this because I just they just they stole my they stole my book. It me they they took it from my my school Google Doc. It was really funny. It was upsetting. <laughs> It's very funny. Um, but yeah, so that that all happened. Adam Adam cried because he lost his book deal. I and I will never write again until Atlas hires me. <laughs> I I loved it so much. And then freaking that fight's so good. So you but beat I knew him. He freaking I gets walloped. Yeah, I because like I knew it wasn't over for two reasons. One, it's slightly anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. And two, I knew there was a lyric version of Keep Your Faith, and there is. It's called Throw Away Your Mask. It's really good. I didn't, but I mm -hmm. did know he had a second persona. Mm -hmm. Which also, yeah, having him as well get a second tier persona. Which his second tier persona is just, speaking of parallels, it's just his Satanile. Yeah, it's fucking huge. It's freaking cool. He has this freaking Faith Buster punch, which is just freaking sinful shell, except he punches you real hard. And well, because, yeah, like, before you do that, the actual, the real part of the fight yeah. that's not scripted is really cool. Throw away your mask, plays. Banger song. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a great it fight. He's just standing there, getting buffed by his persona. And it's not really mm -hmm. doing anything, it's just looming. It looks just creepy and upsetting yeah because you know you know it's gonna do something soon because that's technically the final fight and it's not hard but mm. it doesn't need to be because one you're already pretty powerful you don't need another endurance test after that last one you already did the hard one yeah yeah so you beat him up mm -hmm. and uh have one sec oh adam dies yeah so <laughs> you beat him up mm-hmm and there was a ghost. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was a joker? I think he's waiting. Yes, you you beat up Maruki, and he's like, well, crap, I, I can't lose at this point. I've, like, it's gone too far. His persona absorbs him, and, like, he gives all of his strength to his persona. Mm-hmm. And it does its little mega buster punches. Yeah, it has its giant punches, which... I don't- is it possible for them to kill you, or do you have to keep healing? It's scripted. I think it- I think you'll just endure every attack. Okay. Uh, even still, I- I tried. I tried to kill him, because- Yeah, I kept fun, attacking. I wasn't sure what happened. And it made me feel cool. But so... I don't- I don't- it had three- I don't quite understand why it had three hitboxes, where you could hit its nipples, but sure. To make it seem very scary. I guess. It is actually a terrifying boss fight until you realize no, it's it scripted. No, <laughs> yeah. you're it like, is. it's doing nothing! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, it, Futaba comes, she's like, yeah, it's weakness of the head when it punches. Uh, all its defenses are down. So it punches you. 
<laughs> and it has the best animated 3D cutscene in the game. Mm -hmm. Where everyone gets their little moment to scream at you. Yeah, because everyone, basically, it's going to punch. And when it punches, everyone uses all their power to protect it from the punch and make sure that it keeps using its power to try and push through. Mm -hmm. I believe kicks in because it, it's the best game. Yep. Akechi has the best line. <laughs> I'm a bit occupied here. So do your goddamn job! <laughs> so funny. And then uh, Joker uses his underutilized grappling hook to swing up and he he, Shut up. Sh he shoots him in the face while saying checkmate, which is checkmate. the second most BA line in this game, right behind Begone. <laughs> Don't say BA, you fucking virgin. No cursing. <laughs> See, no, the fact that Joker runs up, that, that's also what I find really funny. So much of that footage is used in the, tr in the trailer, so the fact that they didn't manage to spoil it is really impressive. Like, just it's, how you they can't see what's it. going on at all. Yeah, having Joker run up, land on the thing's face, say, checkmate, shoot through its, shoot through the persona's face to hit Maruki it in the mask. breaks his mask, his solid gold mask. Mm -hmm. He gets flung onto the ground. The place starts exploding, because uh, Sumire talks to him, and you have your little moment where you're like, yeah, like, you need to friggin' stop this. You're running away just as much as everyone else was. Yeah, he's just running away from his problems. He kind of has an epitome, like, there. Mm -hmm. The whole place starts collapsing. Maruki gets freaking killed by the tsunami of dust. Rest in peace, my boy. Well, before that, Morgana saves everyone. No, that's not before. Oh. Fine. So that that's... So after that, because the whole place is collapsing, mm -hmm. then they're like, crap, what do we do? Morgana tries to act like a Chad to impress his uh, simstress uh, <laughs> by just taking all the boulders to fall onto him, which that's not that's not a good plan, Morgana. Was. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Um, and then Sumire is like, hey... Can you turn into a helicopter? No, she's like, can, you like, have to fly. And he's like, yeah. but I can't. And it's like, but we need, we're going to die. And he's like, you know what? It's now or never. I'm going to fly. And then Morgana Copter was born. And then he turns into a fucking helicopter, which was a joke in vanilla that's obviously still in Royal, where, you know, Ryu, like after when they get to Kaneshiro's palace and Ryuji's like, hey, Morgana, can you turn into like a helicopter? And he's like, no, just a car. And then he did turn into a helicopter. It's, it's really freaking cool. And, and hey, I know you were trying to save us, but don't you think you could have made yourself a bit bigger? <laughs> yeah. Because the catchy's just being crushed right there, because it's a tiny Joker. helicopter. Also, I love just like the little fake out of like, wait, where's Joker? And then like the camera pans down, and he's hanging he's from the hook. Hanging down. And then Marky's still not freaking done, because then he sends his little tentacle to hold down the helicopter, and Joker's like, screw it, jumps off from the grappling hook and freaking dives. Such a good shot. Yeah, and he lands. There's a reason. Marky's like, there's a reason that shot ended off the first trailer of the game. So, mm -hmm. and then Mark is like, yeah, I need to get rid of all these lingering regrets. Let me, like, give me this moment to just have no regrets. And it's a scripted fight, but it's still the best boss fight in the game. Where you just, uh, all the, uh, like, Naruto Ninja Storm 4, you get a gold star if you know what I'm talking Shut about. Shut the fuck you up. You, Michelle, you can die. <laughs> um, <laughs> friggin', you just punch each other in the face real slow. And he's screaming, and it's sad, and I'm tearing up right now. No, it's very painful to watch. Maruki is just running up to you, very just in pain, punches you in the face. Then you get your battle HUD, and your only option is attack. You punch him, and you keep doing that for a few turns. And it's just, it's painful. Yeah. Uh, uh, credit to freaking, I think, Billy Kemets is his voice actor. Mm -hmm. Such a freaking good voice role. Yeah. He does such a good job, especially in that moment where he's utterly defeated and just screaming about how he gave up everything. And then once you, like, punch him in the face to finish off that fight, that scream he gives is... Ah! Oh. Yeah. So... You... Ah, crap, one sec, actually. What was the last thing we just said? Um, you wallop Maruki. Yeah. He fucking yells, and it's really upsetting, and then you think he's gonna die. Yeah, so, uh... So the th thing starts collapsing, 
and I'm freaking freaking out because I'm like, oh, well, that's it. He's dead. Nope. He's going to freaking give up on life because he can't handle it. No! Uh-huh. And, and then Joker, so. being not a boring mute protagonist. But he doesn't have a character. Shut up, Adam. He say he grabs Maruki's hand and saves him. Fucking the way Joker's facial expressions are animated are so heartbreaking. Yeah. And then Mona Copter saves you because Mona's a good character and you are mean. Yeah. So that happens. Everything gets reverted. Back up on the mic. That was my bad. <laughs> Um, everything gets reverted. By the uh, way, side note real quick. Since we're now on YouTube, I want to say every no. fucking time I call Adam on Discord, at some, like, at least five times, he's just drifting slowly closer <laughs> to the mic. Okay, no. I turned in my head, and it then it just really slid. Loud. And then he just gets really loud, and I'm just like, Adam, back up. And he's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it just slid. But yeah, so... You know yeah, what? That's you... it. I'm gonna die. No, please continue. Maruki, we save Maruki. Yeah, or we save we him. Play. Everything gets reverted. He's gone. Morgana's gone. Joker's gone. Akechi's gone. Joker's in prison now. Because yeah. it's 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 what should have happened after Yaud about was defeated. Yeah, so every, basically everything from this point progresses as it originally did with some mm -hmm. alterations. Including, uh, we can skip past because they have their, like, they re like they reconvene once you get out. Mm -hmm. Except now all they're they're all wearing their winter outfits and Sumire is there. Uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. My, one of my favorite jokes um, of like because Morgana comes back sooner this time. Oh, yeah, he comes back twice. Because he comes back sooner now. I love Ryuji just like stop freaking doing that. Stop <laughs> again. Futaba's uh, like retired gags are horrible. <laughs> Really yeah, so funny. that happened. It's really good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you get the world arcana. It's the same as before. Yeah, should we talk about our two nitpicks with the way the story was changed? Uh, I was gonna mention that. So, if we have to mention story nitpicks, be just pacing wise, because I believe don't. Don't mention the song. They can fly. No! I believe that the original intro of regular P5 and the ending were mm. paced perfectly. Yeah. It's a 10 out of 10 intro and a 10 out of 10 ending. I feel mm. that Royal, due to trying to insert Kasumi into the entrance, Kasumi. and how they, because there's the two month gap mm -hmm. at the end, it's now a 9 out of 10 intro and like a 9 or 8 out of 10 ending. Probably closer to nine. Mm -hmm. On that note, it's still great. It's still a great conclusion to the story, even if the pacing is just a little weird. The opening and it's worth it for that final arc because it's the best arc in the game. The uh, art in the opening in particular kind of bugged me just because like there's a there's a there's a very important rule about Persona Five, which is you don't interrupt. Life will change. Yeah, and they and it's interrupt. Like, Want to hear Takeover? Yeah, they stop Life Will Change for TakeOver. Kasumi does, song, her all Kasumi does her all-out attack, which is really dumb, because the first all-out attack you see should be Jokers. Yeah. Like, that that it really that does bug me a lot. It's not the worst thing ever, and what is still great about that opening is still great. Mm -hmm. That does kill the pace. It's just like... I feel like especially now, new players might more so just be like, what? Maybe yeah. not as much as me, honestly. I don't know. I, I yeah. want to see how new players feel. But yeah, it's just a little odd. It's less annoying the second time you go around now that you actually know who she is. Yeah, a lot, a lot less. But still, despite the nitpicks, the ending is fantastic. It made me cry. What was end added to the ending is great. There's a lot of stuff. All the Valentine scenes have been redone since There's what happened to Joker's day, different. Because White Day is now a thing. There is now White Day. Can we talk about Sojuro, please? Go ahead. Okay, so Sojuro is ultimate Chad because he's like, you have plans for tomorrow? And you're like, huh? And he's like, it's White Day. It's when, you know, men, you know... Racism. Re no, it's when men... Are like it's you know it's when men give back to the girl who gave them Valentine's Day chocolate. You know you take them on a date, you give them you give them a gift, and you're like I am planned for that. 
Uh, and he's like, oh boy, all right, here, I'll help you out. Because that was always a thing in the original, was kind of this vague thing of like Sodro being a super ladies man in his time. Which is also why I love the idea of his relationship with Wakaba, of like this one woman who wouldn't give him the time of day. <laughs> um, so there was that. So yeah, Sodro, just ultimate ladies man is giving you all of this advice like all right first up you're gonna need a gift get some flowers uh you know that'll be nice then uh take her somewhere nice you know take her to the aquarium that's that just opened up recently go there and then you're gonna need to have a nice dinner and you know uh yeah you get get this all nice the dinner. reservations are out yeah but all the reservations are gone and, and then i love all your dialogue options i just said was like i'm screwed and he's like yeah. all right I normally wouldn't do this, but I know a place. If you call it and mention my name, you should be okay. Which we'll get and we'll get to that in a second. I love one of my other things is like, all right, and then while you're at the dinner, you get you give it to her. And then I love your dialogue box is what you think. I just said the bill, and and so just like you're gonna give her something. It sure as hell isn't the bill. <laughs> the bill. And he's like, you're gonna give her the flowers. Remember when we talked about this? <laughs> Yeah, and so you don't get an item for it, but it's the cutest date ever. And also, yeah, Mona's still, Mona's, like, taking notes. And then you call the place, and you're like, hey, can I get a reservation for two? And they're no. like, and they're like, sorry, we're full. And then you're like, uh, uh, Sodro Sakura told, like, told me to mention this. And he was like, your friend, you know, Mr. Sakura. Uh, one moment, sir. Uh, yes, we will have a reservation for you. And it's not explained, but it's so good. It's so I, funny. Do, do you think he's in the mob? I don't know what he did, but what a fucking legend. I, I think he broke. I think, I think Sojo broke the law. I, I love... I fear. I love Sojo so much. There's a reason in our tier list video he was in my top tier. He deserves And this game just helped. Also, I want to point out one of my other favorite things they added. You are now rewarded for not cheating. Straight yeah, up just rewarded. I didn't get a reward. <laughs> So Adam's a mean person because he's like, I want no, my, no, no. my no 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 I want my trophies. I'm a completionist. I I didn't cheat on them. I simply use them to get a shallow digital trophy. And if you think that makes me a bad person, I think you need to get your priorities straight. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the fact that now when when you get friend chocolate from all of your from all the girls you you friended which I really like. I also like those scenes because there isn't like any romantic attachment to them at all. It is clearly just, this is a platonic relationship between two people who just, who just like each other yeah. and who are just good friends. And it's really cute. And the items they give you are legitimately really, really good. Cause it's a hundred, cause like, yeah, you get a hundred SP back for each of their chocolates. And then the special chocolate you get from on, what, or, you know, I got from on is- No, no uh, just from on, just from on. Just from on, you have to date on. Uh, yeah, the special chocolate you get from her is like the one that restores full SP. So it's really cool. I love that little addition. It, it made me really happy, and it gives you a re it gives you a better reason to not want to be a terrible person. Yeah. Unfortunately, sadly, Ryuji does not give you friend chocolate unless you hang out with him. Um, I'm okay. I have to look up and see if that scene was changed because I haven't looked it up yet. Um, yeah, uh, we we can look that up. But yeah, so. Valentine's happens, White Day happens, it's all good, it's all great, and then we get to the ending, which it's similar, but it's very different. So, there's a few things that are changed about. My favorite thing that has changed is... Maruki. No, but that's a good one. I was going to say the scene where all oh, where Ryuji's yeah. like, hey, can we all meet up at LeBlanc? There's something I want to tell you. And he's like, I'm going to be moving. I want to. I actually want to get back no, into no, running. Let, and let, I'm let me paraphrase fight. this. So every single fan of Thief goes down goes down the reasons one by one as to why they're not gonna hang out with Yusuke ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, no, that was really funny. It was just Yusuke being like, "Huh? But I don't have plans like that." Yeah, he's just like, "Oh, oh, oh of course I got plans. I'm, I'm gonna paint. I'm not gonna oh, yeah. leave until I'm done." It's like that is a legit goal for him, and it works. Cause yeah, it's like all of these characters being like, yeah, I want to, you know, Ryuji's like, I want to move away and, you know, move closer to a rehab center so I can get my leg fixed up and I can start running again. On's like, I'm gonna go study abroad. Haru and Makoto are gonna, you know, go to college and really study. Futaba's gonna That's go fine. to high school. Um, where God is going home with you, and Yusuke is like, oh. So Yusuke is gonna stand outside of LeBlanc menacingly for the entire <laughs> summer vacation. No, Yusuke's still just going to stand at the underground walkway and look at people. 
<laughs> Would you like for me to paint you a car? No, that's why. <laughs> that's what I love about his thing is like if you choose to not take him somewhere, it's just people watching. Yeah. <coughs> no, but yeah, that, that's my favorite thing is getting those texts that the subject subject line says people watching question mark. Um. No, it, it, but like that seems really good. It's such a great way to evolve these characters and set them up for a sequel. Yeah, and the um, ending closes that are really good where, you know, they're all good friends and they're all still working together and have each other's backs, but they all have to go their separate ways. Yeah, and it works really well. And I'm kind of... I mean, I guess P3 kind of did that. I find it funny. We were saying before how, like, the ideal ending is like, yeah, everyone wanted the super happy ending for Persona, like all these happy moments. Mm. And I'm like... I feel like them tackling that narrative mm. made it so they could give a much more bittersweet ending this time mm. around than they did in regular P5. Because I still prefer that ending, yeah. but this one works a lot better thematically for what the third act, like for if you, the third act. Yeah, because like, if you don't have the, the third semester, if you don't have the third semester, the original ending is better. If you do, this new ending is better. Mm. And I love one of my favorite scenes. And then, yeah, then you get the anime cutscene where you actually go home, which, of course, you know, you say goodbye to everyone just like in the original. There's some new lines there. It's actually voiced this time. Giving Sojo the diary is still heartbreaking. He cries. It's so good. So the anime cutscene's been completely redone for the ending, um, which, yeah, I do prefer the original one, but this one's still really good. So instead of your friends driving you home, because uh, they were just going to take you to the train station, you see, like, oh... They're the you know the, the police are still following you like the SIU is still following you, and then Maruki shows up in a cab, and I get scared, <laughs> and it's such a good scene. I loved his whole thing. Is like anyone can start over, you know, even me, no matter what happens. Because he had a change of heart, but instead of crying like a baby like Madarame, he actually like mm -hmm. becomes a good person. Yeah, he already really... was one. Which also, yeah, his treasure being the newspaper article is depressing. <laughs> yeah. It's upsetting. Um, so yeah, he... And also, the, the, the torch when it's in his palace is really good. Yeah. Um, I... But yeah, he, he, he takes you to the train station. Your friends... <laughs> uh-huh. Your friends are just like, all right, we got this. And they fucking book it. They to commit get a the crime. Tale. It's so funny. Um... One thing that I know my brother particularly kind of didn't really like it, and I kind of, I don't dislike it, but I, I get the criticism with it, and a lot of people seem to kind of be iffy on it. Uh, Kasumi in the ending, it's just kind of, she just kind of bumps into you. She's like, hey, remember, keep your head up. Like, you taught me that. And she nods to you, and then you go your separate ways as well. They could have implemented her a bit better, I guess. But that's Yeah, I feel like if they were going to have her there, it could have closed that better, especially since she's kind of gone for a lot of that ending. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's another little critique. It doesn't impact the actual quality of that ending, though, in my opinion. Yeah, the ending's still great. I do still prefer the original of your friends of Morkana fucking... Uh, just fucking over the other guy's cars. They drive Ren home, and that ending of just... I, for me, the, the iconic shot that will always represent the end of Persona 5 will always be wake up, get up, get out there playing and Joker standing out of the roof of the car. Yeah, that that's what I always think about the ending. This one's also pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll say this. it Both both are very poetic endings because in the original, you go there on a train out of your control mm -hmm. with you know your glasses on and you're just kind of sitting there stoically. In mm. how it's pair like how it's contrasted in regular P5 is you're in a car with all of your friends, not no longer alone, being able to set your own path and going and home glasses with your own off, finish. listening to the good song, and it's a good old time. This oh, so one, yeah, both both endings stitching the glasses is really important. Yeah, this one it's not as good. It it is a much more I guess obvious parallel where you're back on the train, you're looking out the window with the glass, and you finally. I was really hoping, I was kind of getting annoyed, I was like, if they keep his glasses on in the ending, I will be upset, I will mm -hmm. be angry, and that he took off his glasses at the very end, and I was like, okay, good ending. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Uh, the, Persona's a bad game if he doesn't take off his glasses at the end. Also, did you notice the fact that outside that window, that was clearly a catchy, that was clearly his outfit. I don't know what you're talking about. So the credits roll. 
Shut up. This end, game has a... video. No. Look, our light We're not ending the video without talking about our light So it's the best credits theme. I didn't think they could make a credits theme better than Nevermore. They and did. And they did it. Uh... Oh, our light is so good. Yeah. Now, here's my question. Should I be a pretentious piece of crap and just end the video on our light? Or have a proper ending to this video? I th you should. I don't know, do you want to actually give final thoughts or do you just Yeah, let's give douche? final thoughts. I'm not. Alright. I'm, I'm not <laughs> that pretentious. Like yes, he says, look, Looking at his Luigi mask in the closet, just kind of staring <laughs> at him from afar. <laughs> looking at his movie. Google Doc of his book, wondering what could have been. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been Atlas. If only I was born in the 90s and uh, was Japanese and made a JRPG called Megami Tensei. Which even then wasn't even their first game. Anyway. Excuse me. So yeah, who wants to go first? What answer do you expect from that question? Who wants to go first? Who, who are you asking? Me, you. Okay, what's your and... answer? I was gonna say the Rainbow Dash figure I have here. She should go first. In a she's jar? Not, she's not in a jar, she's just here. She's standing next to Ridley and On. That's a fitting end. No, listen, okay, this is so Persona 5 Royal, it's it's the best game ever. Yeah. I I it hit like I said this at the beginning of this video. I, I beat the game a day ago. I'm still reeling over just how amazing it was, how much, how much of an impact it had on me. And like you said, and like I said when I talked to you yesterday, the last time a game had this impact on me was about two to three years ago when I beat Persona 5. Yeah, so I, I was playing with my brother, and my mm -hmm. brother likes JRPGs, but he's not like a fan of them per se. He like, if he finds a good one, he'll find it, but it's not his type of game. Mm -hmm. uh, he had played regular P5, I forced him to, uh, and he enjoyed it. At Coming out point. of this, he was like, yeah, this hands down the best game I've ever played. And if he said that, it's worth something. We, yeah, it is, if you for some reason sat through this video without playing the game and got spoiled on anything, it doesn't matter, still play it, it's, it's still worth it. such a glorious There's... experience. If you play regular P5 and you think it's not worth playing, even after hearing all these spoilers, there is so much new and so much improved, it feels like a whole new game. There's stuff we didn't mention. The, there's the fact, like, we didn't mention, like, the fact that you now get phone calls when you finish parts of social links, which add yeah. more to the social links. Like, um, there's so much. Yeah, like, I, I clocked in knowing what I was doing this time, compared mm -hmm. to me having no clue what I was doing in the first run of the game. Mm hmm the first time I played Persona 5, it took me 95 hours to beat the entire game. Yep. To beat Persona 5 Royal, it took me 165 hours. Now, to be fair, ignoring the fusion antics, that's still at least like 30 more hours of content. And even yeah. then, the hours, like the content that's already there, is mm -hmm. significantly improved. For me, my first ever playthrough of P5 was 110 hours. This one was about 127. Yeah. So, that's a decent bit. And considering the fact that I'm willing to bet I got through all the base game stuff I already knew about way faster this time. Mm -hmm. Which is like how much quicker I was getting through battles and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say this was... That's kind of how this turned out for me. Yeah, I guess we can close this out here. Uh, Persona is a game Tycoon! that... Tycoon! Tycoon! Oh my gosh! Okay, sorry. There's a place to close. Thieves Den. Why? <laughs> the best part of the game. Let's close it out with this. This wasn't intended, but this is the, probably the best way I could have written this as a joke ending, but I'm being dead serious. The inclusion of Thieves Den is the coolest thing ever. It's so much fun. Playing Tycoon with Revenge is really funny. Ryuji is the best thing ever. All the movies and the freaking concept art you can unlock is great. Being able to play whatever song you want. All the shit tons of new conversations it's there. It's just the world's coolest extras menu. It's so fun. Yeah. Um. Are we done? Are we done now? <laughs> hey, Michelle. Don't. Don't do it. Hey, Michelle. 
What? Hey, stop. Fuck you. Stop. <laughs> <laughs>